Hey, I'm Spencer. And I'm Britton. Since 2011, Buckethead has released 317 albums in his bike series, brother. And we're going to listen to them three at a time. This is Getting Head. Welcome, people, sheeple, and all their equals. Fecal deacons, regal speakers, and finders seeking that which was once not upon which is founded. <laughs> the general populace, their minds still astounded, that they voted their misery and we all allowed it. Uh-huh. Till it became default and nothing about it can ever become that which became the come on your face and the face in your brain wow. that slowly but surely driving you insane. And until bodes mighty, heavens shall cease. And avast, it's episode 97 of Getting Head, a bucket, a bucket cast. cast. Oh my God. Wow. Brett, that was quite an intro. I actually really enjoyed all of that, especially after uh, everything that I just went through, which was horrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not to mention my regular life, which, you know, has its own fair share of horribleness. But, oh. um, in this case, I've <laughs> we talked. About Your life's the- a real Doctor Horrible sing along blog, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh my God! I told you about how at Password University there's a Doctor Horrible uh, uh, conference room, correct? Uh, no. There is a Doctor Evil conference room, a Doctor Horrible conference room, and a Doctor No conference room, and oh, there's one more Doctor. All the all all the greatest doctors, really. <laughs> Really, I mean, <laughs> I mean, not known for their medical research, really, no, but uh, no, no, yeah, I, a I Doctor mean, Who probably. They probably. Oh, have a I think Who. it is Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah it's yep, gotta yep, be yep, a yep. Doctor Who. I mean, yeah. yeah, Doctor Who's very in keeping with the whole theme there, unfortunately. Yeah, it'd be cooler if it was like Doctor McCoy. Yeah, there you go, Doctor Bones just, McCoy. The, but I, I think if they had a room just called Bones, I think that well, that'd that be would, cooler. <laughs> that would be pretty. Dead, That's the pretty broom tight. closet. <laughs> That's where we keep the bones, you know. Yeah. Just so you know, when we have bones lying around, we just throw them in there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay. So we alluded to this a little bit last week, and it's funny saying last week because technically last week was like two days ago. Don't don't tell <laughs> don't tell the listeners except for the Patreons. They don't know because right, the patrons right. are gonna know because I'm gonna probably edit this tonight and put it up. So it, it was actually it would actually be very funny. I think if you just. You kept that in, but you just bleeped everything I just said, so that it's a mystery. <laughs> like, what the fuck so, did I say? <laughs> yeah, it's just th- like uh, a whole bunch of slurs. Just all the slurs. <laughs> yeah, all the fucking yeah. slurs you know. Yeah, you know You're me. Like, you I went back to like some them. Ellis Island slurs, and uh-huh. I'm like, is that really a thing? Yeah, look it up. <laughs> look it up. I heard it in a fucking old movie. Check it out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right, right, uh-huh. I believe you, uh-huh. That's uh, that's that's silly Billy Jelly Beans. It's silly Billy that's what Jelly that Beans. Is. You're absolutely silly, correct. Silly William Jelly Beans. <laughs> do, you, do you think there's a guy out there named <laughs> William Jelly Beans, and he's like, "Oh shucks, they're still using that slur." <laughs> Wait, what? What slur? Silly Willie Jelly Beans. <laughs> that's a slur. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> You should bleep it so people didn't know what you said. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's pretty good. Uh, Anyways, ah, everything makes my brain hurt and make me want to die, you know. Uh, Yeah. Die, die, pizza pie. You know what they say. Uh, Princess die. Uh, What's up with you? (laughs) Uh, You know, uh, hanging out. My mom just visited. That's cool. You're also, okay, we need to talk about this. You didn't talk about it earlier when you mentioned it. Uh-huh. You are drinking. I didn't. I didn't mention anything. I you asked mentioned something because it's yeah. insane. Yeah. Tell tell everyone what you're doing right now. What you're drinking. Uh, I'm I'm my the beverage on my table. Uh-huh. I have two beverages. First one here. We've got a 12 ounce can of Diet Mountain Dew. Sure. Because I do the Dew. Somewhat it's normal. A, it's, it's nice and summery out, so I I, I like a nice a citrus beverage okay. often. But I am goth, and so I must drink uh, Diet Coke. 
and um, right. you know, at the same time as as Mountain Dew, Diet Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, tell us. I was, how I was just drinking the Diet Mountain Dew earlier, but I'm like, I'm gonna need a big beverage for the cast because right. I talk a lot and my throat gets dry. Uh-huh. Um, and so instead of like just grabbing a bunch of cans of Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, earlier, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna need, I'm, I'm gonna need a big beverage for the cast. I should just get like a two liter of Diet Coke because that's the cheapest way to get it, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, and um, so I just got the two liter, and that's a, that's a half gallon, and uh-huh. I've got this big uh, cold brew mason jar that's uh, <laughs> 64 ounces, one half gallon. It is so big. <laughs> and so I just, uh, you know, I, I chilled off the uh, the thing in the fridge for like five hours, and then just poured it in this giant mason jar and so i'm drinking a giant a half gallon mason jar full of diet coke that is I still have to use two hands to drink like it, you do, I do have, have to great... use two hands well to drink i, I it. could use it i have great grip strength but like Wait, no one is doubting like, your grip strength Brent. it's 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 still like because it's so wet i'm like ah, i'm not i'm not gonna take a chance you know what i'm saying i'm, a, yeah. I'm gonna take a beer take a big gulp for the audience yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. hear this baby okay yeah you're taking a big big gulp right now that was that was a huge gulp Gulp. Okay, I, I I am gonna say it. I think that's too much diet coke. That's... Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. That's Go, a... that's that's discrimination. <laughs> that's, you are discriminating against all goths everywhere right now, and <laughs> President Donald Trump. Thank you very much. That's yeah, true. I am discriminating uh-huh. against Donald uh-huh. Trump. He, because I think he, is, he drinks like a half gallon and of diet coke. Drinks a lot coke. of coke. Yeah. I think I, well he's he's he drinks a lot of diet coke and because of that he's goth. He's not goth and drinks diet coke. Well, he also, he he's is a, goth though. He's he a man who wears makeup, so that's pretty goth too. Um, yeah. 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 Um yeah, that's a lot of diet coke, dude. Um uh-huh. but I wish you luck in sleeping tonight. Caffeine has a half-life of 6 hours. So Yeah, I thought I thought, I thought it was 5 hours. Uh something like that. Depends on the body probably. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And so I want to say there's like 20 something milligrams. I don't know. So this is probably about as much as like a cup of coffee and a half, I'd that say. That is more than that, definitely. Like it, definitely more than that. More caffeine than a cu- cup and a half of coffee? I would say probably. Like how much caffeine in a half gallon of Diet Coke? I want to know. It? I'm going to guess 300 milligrams of caffeine. I think it's probably uh, pretty close to that. Milk per what per twelve ounces. Um, shit. How many in a half gallon? That's gonna be five. <laughs> uh, so it's it's uh about two hundred and forty, two hundred and fifty milligrams. See, I wasn't that far off. I guess three hundred. So. Yeah. It's a it's a decent amount of caffeine. I mean, that's one. As I said, a, a cup and a half of coffee. It's you know. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. it's about two cups of coffee, unless you're, uh, you know. Yeah, that's the two. Uh, yeah, as, as I said, between two hundred, which is about a cup and a half, and two fifty or two fifty, which is about two cups. So, eh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that you're one handing it now. You you you've now got. Oh down yeah, to about, I've, like, I've got. I've, go I've gotten. I've left. gotten it down yeah. enough. I drank. You know, yeah. I drank a good. Um, I'm gonna say like twenty ounces so far. That, so I'm yeah. down to the the. <laughs> The, the second and third 20 ounce are you gonna coke. finish the whole half gallon by the time yeah. we finish the podcast likely we'll see we'll that. see how long this I'll, goes. I'll keep everyone updated about what's yeah going on. yeah speaking speaking of diet coke well... it's time for some mother fucking This week in goth news, it was reported by the New York Post this week that actor, Kanye influencer, and performance artist Shia LaBeouf casually grabbed his partner Mia Goth's boob while out for breakfast <laughs> with their <laughs> newborn child. Okay. The public sexual display comes as LaBeouf is pending trial for sexual battery against his ex FKA Twigs. The trial will begin in Los Angeles Whoa. on April 17th, 2023. That's not very goth. 
not very goth. And in goth obituaries this week, in very sad news, singer Steve Grimmett, best known as the vocalist for 1980s heavy metal band Grim Reaper. Dude, this one hurts. Has finally met his band's namesake today. Yeah. Grimmett started gaining notoriety in the late 1970s while doing vocals for British heavy metal band Medusa before joining up with Grim Reaper and producing several heavy metal hits, including See You in Hell, Fear No Evil, and Rock You to Hell. Dude, some of the bangeriest of bangers to ever exist. Absolutely. All of which were title tracks on their three most well-known albums. Grimmett was also known for receiving a leg amputation while on tour in 2017 and continuing to tour thereafter with a metal prosthetic, truly earning him the title Most Metal Vocalist in the process. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Steve is survived by his wife Millie and son Russ. Stay metal, Steve. Stay dead, but most importantly this time, I'll see See you you in hell, hell, my friend. My friend. See you in hell. Dude, that one hurts, honestly. Like, I mean, Grim Reaper was a band that uh, we discovered around the same time. I don't remember who discovered them first. I think we just saw their music videos on VH1 Classics when we were, like, hanging out. Like, I feel like that was a thing that happened, maybe. Maybe you, or maybe Justin got into them? I don't know. But we started all listening to Grim Reaper kind of around the same time. And uh, that band just had, like, a profound impact on me. Their songs are so incredibly catchy and like memorable for being so simple mm-hmm. uh, like they really do a lot with a, with not very much and yeah and they're very much like proto power metal too oh yeah oh yeah like very like they're they're definitely a uh, new wave of british heavy metal but they mm-hmm. have like something a bit more like soaring direct and like aggressive than a lot of british i would new say wave that of heavy, they're heavy metal probably does. one of the most influential bands to what became modern power metal uh, I'd say like yeah, era. them, Iron Maiden, Man of War, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, they're they're up there. I mean, they're legends, and like this dude is a legend. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Hell Steve yeah. Grimmett. And finally, in goth news, they finally posted it. So I went ahead and finally watched Goth and Pizza Patriarch Papa John. <laughs> Schnatter's full CPAC speech from last week's Conservative Political Action Committee. How long? And I'm here to give you a complete rundown of the speech. How long was it? Ten minutes. Okay, that's not too bad. Yes, it was. <laughs> I'm because sure it was. I'm doing notes here and like trying to like <laughs> summarize what he's saying. So it took me like, you know, a good twenty minutes, half an hour. And so I, I had to watch this. So You did. Let me just break it down for you. Please. Schnatter enters the stage wearing a suit but no tie and an unbuttoned white shirt which reveals a white t-shirt underneath. He wears both a lavalier mic and is also speaking into a regular mic on the podium. Uh He thanks the audience, then asks, who loves pizza? (laughs) The audience cheers. He then asks, who loves freedom? What? The audience cheers again. Dude, he's just softballing him. Well, well, (laughs) he says. Who loves air? (laughs) <laughs> well, he says, if there wasn't any freedom, there wouldn't be no pizza. <laughs> wouldn't be wouldn't be no Papa John's, that's for sure. So what he's saying is there was no pizza in, you know, Soviet Russia. No pizza. Mm-hmm. Nazi Germany. He says, uh, he starts talking about uh, how there's inflation and there's poor foreign policy. Uh-huh. And then he says, oh, I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about the 1970s. That's when my dad was doing business. He says his dad was a serial entrepreneur. He had six businesses who went bankrupt because of Jimmy Carter's anti-business regulations. (laughs) Mm. Mm. He compares today Mm. to the 1970s and says our current commander-in-chief, Joe Brandon, much like Jimmy Carter, was anti-entrepreneur. Then, he says, after Carter, Reagan comes along. He cuts rates in half. <laughs> he doesn't say what kind of rates. He just says he cuts rates in half. The rates. Just have The them. rates. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take, yeah. Taking down the rates, 50%. Uh, fuel prices drop. And we have a magic time for business, in his words. 
He then relates this to the rise of Papa John's, which he started in his dad's tavern in 1984. Mm -hmm. He then goes on to explain that five entities control media, academia, processed <laughs> foods, and pharmaceuticals. Oh, yeah. Here we which go. Sounds like, which sounds a lot like he's about to start talking about the dangers of capitalism, but no, but no. no. It's the culture and the Marxist attacking our youth via sex trafficking, critical race theory, and drugs. This yep. attack causes disarray, which is when these five entities pick up the pieces and gain more control. Hell yeah. Marxism. Yep. He then says he has liberal friends who are full of anger, and he asks them if they're angry because they're stupid or if they're stupid because they're angry. Uh, those people Which, don't sound me, like his friends. <laughs> I know. Either they're not his friends or, yeah, I'd be angry too if my friend called me stupid for my political beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially, oh. if he's, especially if he's Papa fucking John Schnatter. Yeah. <laughs> he then says, he then says, for unity, we must have God and truth. Uh, and that's the end of the speech. He seemed kind of drunk. I don't know. He probably uh, was. I don't know if, he, if he's drunk or just stupid, but I do know one thing. Schnatter stepped down as CEO <laughs> of Papa John's in 2018 after he blamed declining sales on football players protesting the treatment of black people in America, causing their stock to fall 30%. Then he used the N word during a conference call. Dark news, dark news, some cool news. Oh my god. Wow, what a goth news. A goth news for the ages. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thanks yeah. thanks for that, Britt. Um, so we're doing this podcast early this week. Today is like a this is a Monday night, which is a weird time for us to do a podcast. Very but... we've done it like once before on a Monday, I think. Right. Or I think maybe we were doing stuff on Mondays like early on, but then I was like, wait, this doesn't work for me at all. And I'm just causing everyone yeah. grief. Um But yeah, we're doing it early because this weekend I'm gonna be gone. I am going to Psycho Las Vegas is a mm -hmm. metal and just a, it's a music there's festival. like hip-hop yeah, there's yeah, hip-hop there's i mean but there. it's like yeah. it is a a music festival focused mm -hmm. primarily around metal and extreme metal um yeah yeah i mean that's a big part of it it's yeah it's it's definitely mm -hmm. like all types of stuff for sure there's, there's so yeah. many good bands that are playing i'm very very excited um so i'm super stoked to see a bunch of bands i'm going with a past guest and uh Fr past friend Monty McCleary. <laughs> yes, past friend. Past Excellent. Friend. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're we're very excited to watch Emperor together because um, mm. that's a cool thing. Emperor like has doesn't really like play anywhere, let alone the U.S. So that's pretty yeah. pretty special. Um, excited. I also get to see Olver, which is super. That's sick. awesome. Let me tell you about like that, I'd be I'd be I'd be the most stoked for Olver. Uh, I was uh, stoked for them coming to the states a few years ago, but they had to cancel the tour. Yeah, for so, for real. I know. I remember that. Yeah. I I was gonna buy tickets to that. I, I already bought a ticket. And right. Canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, let me go over some of the some of the bands that are playing here. Um, so we got. Let me tell you my favorite thing that's happening. So on Saturday. So this coming mm -hmm. Saturday this is Saturday, June uh, or not June. Sorry, August twentieth. Um, yep. At five p.m., Bone Thugs mm -hmm. and Harmony. Yeah, yeah. At I've six. Already, I, uh, I saw them in Alaska yes, when did. I was like at si 19. Guess who is playing immediately after Bone Thugs? Who's that? Olver. <laughs> oh, that's sick as Isn't hell. Isn't that fucking that's tight? Sick as hell. That rules. On the same stage? Same stage, yeah. Oh, that's rad, Isn't that dude. that fucking tight? That's fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, like, that's, 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 that's one of my like favorite like turnabouts. Boom, 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 boom. And then like, uh, later on that night on that same stage, uh, Carpenter Brute is playing. So. Oh, neat, neat. Yeah. Oh, ooh, I wonder if he'll uh, play, uh, if Olver will come on <laughs> dude, and play the song. I wonder that, that too. I've been wondering that. I think yeah. that's going to be really, really sick. Like, mm -hmm. I hope that does happen because they're both going to yeah. be there. Uh, yeah. That'd be so tight. I mean, are, are any other um, people who have worked with Carpenter Brew going to be there? Uh, I'm or, not sure. Know? I Nobody that like jumped out to me, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure we shall see. But I'm just, I love that like turnabout of like Bone Thugs into Ulver. Like, yeah, dude, that that's fucking tight. Somebody who was scheduling that was like, yeah, this would be cool. <laughs> yeah, so. some fucking dork. Yeah, some fucking dork like me. Like us, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it feels good. <clears throat> so I'm I'm curious to see what that's going to be like. Curious to see what 
Las Vegas is going to be like. I haven't been to Las Vegas since I was 10 years old. Huh, more like lost wages. Am I right? Ha 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 ha. Bucket jokes are leaking. Yes, they are. Uh, I Yeah, I, I keep forgetting that it's in Las Vegas because like I just don't give a shit about like gambling or anything. Um, but like, you don't, I bring this up because I, I want to ask you, Brit, mm-hmm. what should I try to do in Las Vegas outside of seeing all these bands? Get a whore. Ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, uh, or, or, you know, wait, like, is, is prostitution legal in Las Vegas? Yeah, or like like really heavily decriminalized and shit. Yeah, ah. and there's like the bunny ranch and shit on the outskirts, or that's outside of Las Vegas. But uh, yeah, you should you should definitely get a sex worker. That'd be sick. I I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, but I like that suggestion, Britt. If you have any other cool suggestions, I don't know. Go see a show. Go see a magic show. Magic <laughs> shows are sick. Magic the Gathering, the show. I'm I'm interested in that. No, no. If like Chris Angel is playing, go see Chris Angel. <laughs> no, that would be tight. No, so to be completely honest, I I literally will not have any time to do anything but see bands. Um, okay. I, I well, I mean, you gotta eat, and there's great restaurants there, so you should. That's try to true. Check out some that's cool, true. Like they have great <clears throat> fucking. Veggies. One of my uh, one of my Instagram uh, friends was like, "Hey, we're we're gonna go get th- we're gonna go to this vegan sushi place." And this is some dude I like. I, I don't really know, but he was like, "We're I, we're gonna be there. We're gonna go to this vegan sushi place. You're coming with me." I was like, "Okay." So I'm going to go do that. Uh, But yeah, so I get in on uh, Thursday night, so technically Friday morning at 1 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. Past guest and friend of the show, Dan Bones, is playing uh, at 2 Uh a.m. His band is playing at 2 a.m. So I'm going to go straight from the airport to Dan Bones' show and see Dan Bones and then meet up with Monty and it's going to be a weekend. And then the show starts again at 11 a.m. on Friday, 11 a.m. until 4 a.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That, that's, a long, that's a lot of fucking bands. Boy. Holy shit. It's going to be crazy, Britt. It's going to be crazy. It's a long boy. It's a long boy. Um, so I'll be sure to regale everyone with stories once I return. Um, mm-hmm. I'll I'll edit them all out. <laughs> Please, that, that's what Every you're here to do. <laughs> or I'll, I'll bleep I'll bleep them out from now on, and that way people will just think you're fucking a racist <laughs> and just slurring all over the place. And I'm like, does that? I don't think those people are even what. Oh, well, okay. Well, do this. Isn't that a frac the fractional thing? You're gonna bring that back? Whoa, dude! Come on. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Um. Also, okay. I, I don't know if you know about this. Okay, so the band Megwa, the fucking black metal Mag- band, are they are they canceled or not? I can't actually figure it out. Wait, Megwa? It's spelled M G L A. Oh, I don't I don't even know. I don't care. Okay. I, I, I used something. to really like that band, but then like I heard they got canceled or something. I don't know. It's black metal is so hard to follow. Like I at this point I just don't listen to black metal because I just don't want to have anything to do with any of the nonsense surrounding it. Um, yeah, I mean, most, mo- I mean, you know, like, what, there was it's unfortunate. someone, yeah, uh, it's yeah. unfortunate. it is very unfortunate, I'd, I'd agree, like, most of the, the, like, the, the black metal bands, you know, from back in the day, like, should, should be canceled, or they just became not black metal bands that are cool. Right, yeah, and you know, you know what was the final straw for me when it came, so, like, I, over the, the past few years, oh, well, okay, not few years, the past 10 years, really. I was really into black metal in like 2009 oh, yeah. to maybe 2014, mm-hmm. I guess. And yeah. kind of after that, I just sort of like fell off it. And like, there wasn't really any reason that I fell off. it. I just got into other music. I still liked it. But then mm-hmm. since 2017, it seems like all of the bands I, <laughs> I liked are now problematic. And so I'm like, well, I don't even want to go back to this at this point. Like I, mm-hmm. right. Like that sucks because the only bands I would listen to, I'm not supposed to listen to anymore. And so I'm like, okay, and that's fine. I, I respect that. Mm-hmm. I mean, like like you said, those the bands deserve to be canceled if they're doing shitty shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? People got to take and, accountability. And not, you know what not, I mean? Yeah, not just like doing shitty shit, but like never being held accountable for it and like seemingly to continue to have shitty beliefs. Right, right. Like, I mean, my big one really is like mayhem. 
like I don't know anything everyone about- in mayhem is a piece of shit like that that was in the band from back like hellhammer real piece of shit hmm. real homophobic piece of shit mm. um you know everyone else that was in the band like some people you know they've said that uh they've they've distanced bard from royalties or something like that but i'm like uh, i don't know i doubt it um yeah it's to, it's, to be honest I he, like he wrote a lot of the lyrics too and so like if you're listening oh, yeah, to the yeah. music like you know it's his fucking nazi art mm. that he disguised it's fucking crypto fascist shit yeah hate that you know and it's like the big like i don't know the big ones for me are Drudk because I legitimately yeah. Oh, yeah. really like that band. You and I both oh, me too. really like that band. Oh, yeah. Like, we no, were, like, I mean, they make really cool, interesting music, but they're fucking Nazis, so I, I won't fucking and support then, them at like, all. And then, the other big one for me, the biggest one for me, the one that, like, really mm-hmm. crushed me out of, like, <clears throat> any love I had for black metal is, like, when this band started getting shit, and mm-hmm. I realized, like, I couldn't stand them uh, anymore, mm-hmm. and they were the only one that I really legitimately loved, and that's Death's Fellow Omega. Like, that's... Oh, interesting. I, 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 like... I have a really complicated relationship with that band because I, I legitimately mm. love some of their albums. I think they're absolutely brilliant. That being mm. said, you know, uh, vocalist dude is a super problematic dude and it sucks. And even though like that band, like supposedly he didn't write any of the lyrics or whatever, like mm-hmm. that sucks that he's involved. Why is he involved? Like, yeah, that's the least important part of that band. Like get a mm-hmm. different vocalist. Come on. For sure. Like yeah. what, what the fuck are we doing? And like, it just sucks because like I want to like the shit that I like and it sucks mm. when like people have shitty opinions, they have shitty politics, they take something yeah. I think is cool in a legitimate artistic sense and they pervert it with bullshit and then are too like self-important or too short-sighted to address it, take accountability for it and either move on or stop, right? Like I just yeah, yeah. it sucks, man. It pisses me off. I'm all riled up today, Brit. That window shit. It's got me on I something. See that. Oh. Yeah, let's uh you wanna you wanna calm things down a little bit with a bucket fact? Yeah, let's do it. Sounds good. Bucket fact, 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 bucket fact. Last week we discussed Buckethead's involvement with the band Refrigerator in nineteen ninety seven. And we and we briefly touched on the fact that uh the brothers of the band, Dennis and Alan Khaleesi, did an interview with Buckethead in nineteen ninety one which Buckethead then re- later released himself. And I think it uh, might be um, the first thing to actually mention Herbie in Buckethead lore. And I believe this is the first inter- interview that Buckethead does as Herbie representing Buckethead. So uh, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind reading this interview with me. Yeah, I, let's uh, do it. I put it in the, uh, the file with um, uh, our Ralph scenes. Uh and you can take either the interviewer or Herbie. Um, <laughs> you be Herbie. <coughs> Herbie, you're speaking on behalf of Buckethead? That's right. I'm his errand boy. How did you hook up with Buckethead? He made me in his chicken coop out of straw. Bones from chickens. More bones, more better. Do you have an input in his musical ventures? He comes to me first with everything, always. How old is he? He died a long time ago. He's a good taxidermist. He enjoys dressing up his chickens, bringing them back to life, and playing with them. What do you think motivates Buckethead to write music? He realizes the Banshee Bot is coming to destroy the planet and the only way he can kill off this incredibly monstrous ghost robot creature that is transparent is through sound waves. Minor second diminish combinations can in factory destroy the monster. <coughs> Buckethead is trying to save the planet. What if he can't? We'll find out, I suppose. What do you think the impetus for the Praxis LP, or sorry, what was the impetus for the Praxis LP with Bootsy Collins, Brain, and Bill Laswell producing? That was just an outlet for eating head cheese. Do Bootsy or Brain eat head cheese? They don't like head cheese. How about Bill Laswell? He does not eat head cheese. Vernon Reed, living color guitarist. 
Head cheese. Vern, 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 what's that? I don't know what that is. Buckethead seems very shy. Does he ever talk to the press? He doesn't speak. He has no throat. Chickens hurt him. Chickens hurt him. How did they hurt him? No throat. No throat. Chickens hurt him. We hear he's a big admirer of Michael Jackson. Yeah, he likes Michael Jackson. Whom else does he admire? Giant Robot. How did he find out about Giant Robot? He lived behind a drive-in theater and there was a hole in the wall. Oh, I bet there was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I read that earlier, I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to, if Spencer does it, I, you know. Yeah. Uh, they used to play it every Sunday morning and every time it came on, he became Giant Robot. Is this the same theater where he saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes. Exactly. They make head cheese. They take the head and they boil it, except the tongue. They scrape the bone clean to the flesh. Nothing is wasted. So Buckethead is involved in a lot of different projects. He went to Japan. Yes, he went to Japan to search for a giant robot. To his disappointment and dis disillusionment, he didn't find giant robot. He only found a small figure of Giant Robot, which he owns and cherishes. John Zorn is putting out a CD of Buckethead in Japan. Yes! Buckethead Land! More than anything, Buckethead wants to create his own amusement park. In his mind, it exists. It's called Buckethead Land. It will have rides that go off the tracks. People will not live very long. And he enjoys these thoughts very much. The CD is the only way he can get to people so far, so he made it to express this. It is the first of a series that will hopefully last as long as he does. So this is the actual music that will be on the ride? Some, yes. When does the soundtrack come out? February 5th in Japan. It has no U.S. released. What does Buckethead think of Marty Friedman in Terry? He doesn't understand chicken scratch. End of Burn. interview. <laughs> yeah, right? Holy shit. That's pretty good. Uh, Dude, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So much prophetic shit there. The, the line in particular about, like, this is a series that will last hopefully as long as he will. And that was in 91. And look, he's still doing it. He's still doing the series. And so that's that's kind of really why I wanted to highlight this interview is like, yeah, this was like, I think, the impetus of the Pike series, really. Right. And the first time we even get a hint of his vision of the Pike series, which he wouldn't even start until 20 years later. Yeah. Which is nuts. So he had he had this going on in the back of his mind. And I guess like his albums in total were in a way a part of the Pike series. And that they were always all part of the rides of the park, which really I think something. is pretty fucking cool. That's pretty something. That's commitment. Pretty commitment to the bit. Fucking absolutely. Um, obviously, this interview really more than anything just raises more questions. But you know what? That mystery is just another wonderful element to all Buckethead is and all he represents. Bucket facts. We listen to three. Pike 293, 294, and 296. Yep. Yep. Oven mitts. Oven mitts. This is a live Orc Pike. threads and ghoul of the graves, respectively. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. I was like, well, are we going to we gonna tell them? No. Gonna tell them what the titles are? All right. Let's, <laughs> uh, let's jump into Pike 293, Oven Mitts, released on July 9th, 2021, just 10 days after the previous Pike Galaxies. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe this pike, Spencer? Uh, I would describe it as a live pike. It, it, all live songs. It is all live songs. Recorded on someone's phone, Recorded perhaps. Recorded on someone's phone, yes. Or maybe one SM57. Yeah, it. Uh, that is what it sounds like. Uh, the sound quality is of particular note. It really does sound like it was recorded from a phone. 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to say that... Given, given the song selection is good, yeah, and it's like something... Uh, people, if he actually made like a good live album, people would want all of these songs on there. They just want them recorded well, I think. Right. So we have... Um, let me Let me run down the songs we have on here. We have Soothsayer. Mm -hmm. uh, from 2006's no, Crime like a, Slunk Scene. This is a, a shortened version of Soothsayer, though. It is not the full length. It, 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 well, yeah, in all of these, uh, there's only a couple of these songs that I think are like the exact same version that have like the, the similar runtime. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are jammed out on or a little less complete. But for the most part, they have like all of the elements of the original song. So we got Soothsayer from uh, 2006's Crime Slunk Scene. Uh, followed by Ghosts of Broken Eggs from Pike 101 in the Hollow Hills from 2014. Uh, then we got Toy Store, which was originally titled Buckethead's Toy Store from 1994's A Giant Robot. Mm -hmm. Oven Mitts, which is an original song, but it's like a one-minute funk jam. Mm -hmm. And I think all of these are played live with, uh, with, Bu or with Brain and Brewer, or at least Brain. I can't really hear much bass in them. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but, I don't know. It sounds like programmed drums, but some of them are programmed. Yeah, it's confusing. Uh, it's like, but, but some of them are obviously like live drums. It sounds like they could have been like live recorded drums that are now being played that back too. as a the track. thing is like there's so many yeah, and it's it's hard it's to really gauge hard really to because yeah. the drums are so poorly recorded that they're like all plosives. Right. Like it all is all it, yeah. It just sounds like the wind of drums well, hitting see, you. See, I, I feel like that's and more it's... the the result of the recording, not necessarily like. I mean, the recording of the pike. Like it sounds like it's recorded off of a phone, you know. Exactly. <clears throat> or yeah. maybe like a Zoom recorder or something like that, right? But it mm -hmm. like it yeah. definitely. Here's the thing. I don't think it sounds good enough to be a Zoom. Yeah, recorder, you're right. Actually, here's the thing. You know. <laughs> yeah. What I was what I was thinking like. Well, I did mm -hmm. enjoy this the song selection, and I enjoyed the song selection of both of these live pikes. This one and two ninety four is the kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I enjoyed the song selection on them, but the I feel like due to the poor nature of the recordings, I feel like you're better off mm -hmm. watching a live video of this because oh, at least 100%. then you'll see his performance. And right? that's that's the thing is it is it sounds like he just took these off of live videos from YouTube, which I'm like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That, well, that, uh, one I thing I'll say uh, is this: like, it definitely does sound yeah. like the whatever the recording device is is in one spot. So at least it's not like somebody's phone that's like moving around. True. So at but, least it's not the, that. But it's that's not all, that's also a problem though yeah. because there is crowd noise yeah. and like a bunch of it. There's a lot of crowd and it's, noise. Yeah. There's a lot of crowd noise and like versus the music, it's like. Once again, like, why why wouldn't you just watch a YouTube video? And also, it sounds like it's from a YouTube video. Right. Like, if you're watching a YouTube video, it's not necessarily just for the sound. Right. So it's ah, um, it is it is the, a, yeah, it is puzzling. Yeah. Like listening to this, it I was I'm like, like, why why, why I just would he do watch that? Watch a YouTube yeah. video rather than and why would he release? And and maybe he was I don't know in a creative rut or something, and he's like, I just need to release something i i have no idea but uh last two songs on there are welcome to bucket headland which is a great song from 1994's giant robot again and the last one is siege engine uh from 2008's uh, uh siege engine um and like sometimes the guitar sounds okay mm -hmm. But mostly not. Mostly the whole mix is just like bad. I guess it's like impressive on some level to hear him play the songs live. His playing is generally quite good. Um, yeah. But still, like, I feel like he's doing big long takes on these pikes anyway. So it's almost like him yeah. playing live in a lot of circumstances. Pretty much, yeah. So I don't know. I struggle to understand what uh, the point of this is, unfortunately. I do too. Um, yeah. So that's that's oven mitts. The only original song on here is oven mitts, which is one minute. Right. I would uh I would straight up, unfortunately, not recommend this. Play. No, same. I would say straight yeah. up watch a YouTube video. That's the move. One hundred percent. Like speaking of oven mitts, uh, what's the worst burn you've ever gotten in a kitchen? Oh God, dude, I've been burned so would, many would times. It, Holy shit. Would oven mitts have helped? Uh, yes. I have definitely pulled pans. Or picked up pans that are really hot. Oh yeah, okay. 
This is maybe not the worst one I've ever had, but it was one of the worst for sure. And this was like cooking at home too, which is wild because I was a prep cook for so long. Like I, I definitely mm -hmm. did hurt myself being a prep cook, but like the worst I ever hurt myself being a prep cook was when I sliced my thumb open on the meat slicer. That, that really sucked. Um, but the worst burn I think I ever got was, uh, I was cooking at home one time and my girlfriend at the time had this like oven pan. So it was like a pan that it was like a cast iron pan that had like grill stuff on it and you would like put yeah, it in okay. the oven and like you would like cook stuff on it in the oven. It was actually sure, like a really sure. cool pan. It uh, made some really nice stuff. Well, what had happened was she had put it in the oven to like get it really hot um, and then taken it out of the oven and it was just sitting on the stove. Oh, and it no. just looked normal. It didn't. I didn't know no. there was anything up with it because she had oh, taken the towel why? she was using with her. And I was cooking on no. the stove, and I had like walked away for a second, come back, seen that sitting next to me on the stove, which is fine. I was like cooking whatever. And then I was like, why is that sitting there? I should put that away. So I just grabbed it, went to put, put it away, and mm. it was the hottest pan. It was the hottest pan. Yeah. And I, yeah, the fucked up part was that I wrapped my hand completely around the no. handle and picked ow, it ow, up ow. and was like, ah! <laughs> like, it was very, uh, it was a very shocking experience. Um, mm -hmm. It hurt very, very bad. But that was, was, I think, the worst one because like it burned such a large area of my hand that my hand was mm -hmm. just like in pain for quite some time. Like when I was a prep cook, I got pretty used to being burnt. And like, I just, like, Oh yeah, you do. Especially on like your forearms. Right. And shit. Yeah. For right. me, it was always like my hands or like parts of my hands. Cause I was constantly spilling boiling water on my hands when I was working at the cafe. And hmm. I just got really used to that. And like, it would hurt, but they would like go away pretty quickly. Like but, oven mitts would definitely not help with, with hot water. That'd be the worst. Right. right. Um, well. yeah. And so when I, when I burnt that, that large part of my hand, like it, my body just didn't know what to do with it. It was like, wow, we really haven't gotten to burn this bad ever. This is pretty wild. Um, and yeah, it sucked really, uh, really bad. What's the weirdest thing you've ever used an oven mitt for? Um, weirdest thing I've ever used an oven mitt for. Um, I've never used an oven mitt in a weird way. Spencer, That's disappointing. Like you've never you. like, you know, no, not no, had never. any like, Oh, 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 okay. I, I'll, I'll take I'll take that okay. back. I have jerked off to the hamburger helper glove, if that counts. Wait, really? Is that serious? Yeah. <laughs> Pike 294 warp threads released on July 11th, 2021, two days after oven mitts. Uh, yeah, so warp threads. Right. This one was also a live yes. album. Another, like, best of live album. You know, about 30 minutes long also. Six songs, once again. Yeah. Um, um, like, I'll, I'll say one thing. I really like the execution on Jordan, the first song, right. Jordan Live. So that song's originally from uh, 2006's yeah, Guitar I, Hero. I'm going to run like down the, the track. I like the execution to, on to, that one. I like yeah. the execution on Redeem Team as well. Like, Yeah, from uh, 2008's Albino which is, Slug. That song slaps. Um, I mean, that song's really cool. Oh, it does. And all, all these songs yeah, good, slap. Good song like, I like all these songs. Yeah, once again, really good song choice, but like it sounded like it was recorded on someone's mm -hmm. fucking phone. Uh, and the, that's a weird thing is it's not really differing quality. It sounds like kind of like it was recorded all on the same device, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. To me. Because you, you think, like, if he just pulled it off YouTube videos. So maybe he did just, like, record this with his phone or something. And, like, yeah, well, I have these Yeah, tracks. it is really, like, confounding um, to me, like, what we're doing here. I, I, listening to these, I was like, this is a good selection of songs. Like, I'm enjoying listening to these songs. Mm. But also, like, dude, what are we doing here? <laughs> this is, like, I don't, I, I yeah. am confounded by this. I feel like it would have been better if he had just put up some videos, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I can't hate on it too much because, like, dude is a supreme talent. Like, he's cool. At, but... the, same, at the same time, like, I don't, I don't know. know. This this is really... It is... For, for his output, this is yeah. beneath him. Definitely. Um, it definitely feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. Tr track two uh, was another one from a Pike, which was cool. Uh, Flare, uh, which was from Pike 95 right. Northern Lights. Which is the one with like the coolest cover ever? The dog running from right. the explosion. Oh the my god, head. that cover yeah. rules! Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah, for reminding was, me. Yeah, of that. I uh, did forget. Yeah, and then we have uh, Night of the Slunk. Uh, this track three, and that's from 1999's Monsters and Robots. Uh, great track, but once again, recorded on a phone. Uh, Fountains of the Forgotten, 
uh, from 2004's Cuckoo Clocks from Hell. This one actually surprised me because I didn't know this was like one that Buckethead even played mm-hmm. live. Pretty good execution, mm-hmm. recorded on a phone. Redeem Team, as we mentioned before, 2008's Albino Slug, and then Nottingham Lace uh, from 2005's Enter the Chicken uh, is on there, which is like the only instrumental really from that album. But I kind of wanted to mention that because... Uh, right. He just released like yeah. all of the instr- well, not all of the instrumentals, but a lot of the instrumentals from the tracks with vocals. I just from saw that, album, that. Uh, yeah, like a couple days ago, which is pretty that's cool. actually pretty neat. Like I, I think that's neat. Mm-hmm. I I think maybe the vocal collaborations are probably the most interesting part of that album, just because they're so varied, you know. Uh, uh-huh. But like that's cool, right? I, I always like it when bands release instrumental versions of their songs. I think that's cool. I remember the last yeah, that band really cool. that I I noticed doing that was that gent band Periphery, um, which mm-hmm. made me listen to their album because like I really I thought their vocals were super cringe at the time. I haven't listened to that band in ten years, right? So I don't know what that mm-hmm. I don't even know what they sound like now. But uh, I remember when they did that, I was like, oh okay, cool. I'll listen to their album, which is weird because I think their vocalist is named Spencer. I think I, I it's been a long time since I thought about this. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't cool. know. The instrumental version of that album, what I think it was like their second album or something. It was cool. It was neat. Mm-hmm. It was cool that they did that. Super. It's fun when bands with cringy vocals decide to release the instrumental cut. I mean, you know, cringy to, to you isn't cringy to everybody. You know, totally. It's, I don't like a lot of vocals, and it's just like I just don't listen to that right. music. Same. You know. Um. Yeah, so I I don't love this album. I don't love this Pike. I would put this at very below average since it's just... I mean, it, the thing is, too, it's like not... There's only like one song from an actual Pike from each of these albums. That's true. Which is, um, you know, whatever. Right. Um, I mean, the song, like I said, I think the song selections is pretty good. Uh, out. That's yeah. the best part of the album is the is the song he songs yeah. he chose like, yeah. Uh, but other than that, I would not recommend them. And uh, you know, the Buckethead community really wouldn't recommend them either. I uh, I remember when these were being released. Um, you know, I was pretty active on like Buckethead Reddit and a couple other Buckethead forums, and uh, people really didn't yeah. Like this. The the YouTube comments are interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet they will yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. I didn't take a take a take a big gander at the YouTube comments, but I'm sure I uh, will. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Warp threads. Uh, what's a? F- uh, if you were going to the warped tour, what <laughs> threads would you wear? What what, what would Bro, your be? Bro, okay, dog? I got I have a full. Uh, I just thought of that. Dude, that, that shit was on incredible. Spot, nice. Also, just yeah, an, up, an update here on your everything. diet coke. <laughs> you you have like basically a less than a third of the jar left. Is what it looks like. Yeah, I got like a twenty yeah. ounce left. Uh, I'd say. Oh, actually, I have a I have a thing right here. It says I have a little less than three cups okay. left. So like twenty twenty two ounces. Right. Probably. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Mm-hmm. I started with like nine yeah. ten cups. Um, just giving an update there. Uh, but yeah, no. Okay, so if I was going to the warp tour, I mean, obviously, I would need skater clothes. Um, and I was just think going over skater mm-hmm. skater brand. So let's say I would. Okay. Is there a year in mind? Like, if I was to go to the Warp Tours in, say, 2004, because I know exactly what I would be wearing then. No, no, no. If, if it still exists this now. Now. <sighs> okay. So, uh, this is what I would wear. I would wear the new... Uh... <laughs> okay, so I bought something incredible on the internet the other day. Uh, it's from one of those bootleg uh, pages on Instagram that makes, like, cool bootlegs. And they are joggers that have the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater logo on them on one side. And then on the other side is a giant Neversoft eye, you know, like Neversoft, the company that made it, they oh, the yeah, eye yeah. with like the That's spike basic. through it. So it's like a giant Neversoft yeah. eye on one side, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater logo on the other side. I would wear those, obviously. Um, and then uh, I would probably wear my uh, Ministry with Sympathy long sleeve, uh, just, you know, because okay. Ministry's tight and I want to rep that. And <laughs> yeah, because you want you want dudes to like invite you to the obviously glory hole I need there. to know where the glory hole is, Brent. Like, you got to make it obvious. I mean, we 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 know Uncle Al likes sucking. Hey, a dick. according to Al Jorgensen, if you haven't sucked a dick, yeah. you're really missing out. 
Yeah. Dude, we love that, that guy. Uncle Al. That's great that Uncle Lee advice. That guy is like an endless source of like incredible quotes. He's so like, cool. Incredible He's quotes. so fucking cool. Dude is cool. so quotable. I, like, I want, you know what I want so more cool. than anything else? I, I want like one it. of those like yeah. calendars, those daily calendars where you like rip off a page every day, but it's just oh, Al yeah. Jorgensen quotes. That's I would invest in that. Fun. Invest. Mm -hmm. Let's... Yeah, you should insist right. in that. <laughs> what are you doing, Step Uncle <laughs> Al? Ew. Uh, if you <laughs> if you had to go to a Star Trek convention, what warp threads would you wear? Um, I'd go dressed like I was at a Renaissance mm -hmm. fair. And I would do the reverse of of what those yeah. dumbasses yeah. do, going to the Renaissance Fair dressed as uh as like yeah. Star Trek characters. I'd go there and be like, "What is all this technology?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? I just want a. Uh, I just go in with like a big <laughs> turkey leg and like a a big like goblet of go. ale and just like ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I yeah. do. Th okay, okay. The first crew of people that thought up the idea of going to a renaissance fair in star trek uniforms that it was, was very, very funny, funny. it was extremely tbs at the time the extremely time tbs which had to have happened back in the 70s like yeah that have, had to have happened a I long don't know. time i like but it, it's become one of those things it's like it reminds me of like a, a chain email joke it's like one of those things yeah, where it's like you know, like so, something something at this point that they like have multiple sitcoms where they've had an episode about uh, it. Oh, well, did Big like Bang it. Theory do that? Did they do that? That's not, gross. Not that would really be gross not. if they did that. Uh, I hate that. Yeah, they did Star Trek cosplay, but it wasn't really like that. Uh, terrible. Uh, yeah. Um. You know what else is terrible is the fact that Pike Two Ninety Five was never released. Yeah. Did you listen to the? I could not the find it. I actually it? looked for a preview. I couldn't find yeah, it. Yeah, that's because it doesn't yeah. exist, Spencer. It doesn't exist. The album was actually never even announced, nor is a preview available for it. Uh, during the space between Pike's Two Ninety Four and Two Ninety Six, there's quite a few bedroom jams with a drum machine and previews of two songs not on any of the Pikes that we listened to this week that are accompanied by some video clips. Uh, Buckethead did, however, oddly lists the Pike 295 album art for sale, which was hand, a hand-drawn figure that he did, uh, listed on August 4th of 2021. He listed it for $1,000. Wow. And I'm not sure if it's sold, but the album, the Pike, has never materialized. That's strange. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a weird time, dude. Yeah. yeah. Pike 296, Ghouls of the Graves, released on October 21st, 2021, 102 days after yeah. Warp Threads. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, like this this, this album is actually like pretty rad. I I dug it. I thought it was re really really good. Yeah, it yeah. slapped. Um like yeah, it's uh so this one's yeah. just three songs. Uh Ghouls of the Graves, um Star Serpent and Glass Mines. Uh the first two songs are about like 12 minutes long put together and the last song is like almost 20 minutes yeah. long. It's a it's a long one, or yeah. maybe like fifteen, but it's a, a, a pretty yeah. sick song. No, this whole thing um, is sick. Yeah. Like the, all of the songs are sick. Like yeah. the production's really good. Yeah, so there's a bunch like, of synths yeah. in every song. So there many are. keyboards, and so the synths, the synth synths actually do yes. melodic oh my stuff God. in this yes. album. Yes, there's and like harmonic there's like a stuff. Bell they don't just like do backing stuff. And yeah, I'll, yeah, they're like. Ding, I was ding, like, ding, whoa, ding, ding, what the fuck? After, and, and it was like a back and forth with a guitar. It was like, dana, da, dana, da, dana, ding, 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 ding. And I was like, dude, this dude, is actually, actually really, really sick. sick. And so that was, yeah. that was, uh, I think, um, yeah, that was on uh, track three, right. Glass Mines. Um, the whole thing is a fucking, like, it it's a rip really dungeon, is. this And, album. like, also a yeah, special it's... shout out to the uh, drum programming, like, especially in the Very last good. song. Very... Like... So I liked it in the first song, too. So the, the drums sound really good. They're super yeah. punchy and, like, super in yeah. the mix. Like, they're they're really, like... I don't know. I, I really liked them. They're obviously um, pretty compressed. Yeah, they, they sound, sound good. good. And like, like they, the they uh, good. the programming is just really good. Like it, around the the twenty two minute mark uh, of track three, mm -hmm. um, well, not of track three, but around the twenty two minute mark in track three, uh, there's some like drum fills that I was like, made me like mm -hmm. stop and be like, oh, th this is definitely programmed, but like. 
those are some really good yeah. fills. It's like those programmed are programmed well. by somebody who yeah, yeah. knows drums. Like that's mm-hmm. that's pretty rad. Like and there's always there's usually moments of like good drum programming, but like there's this one was in particular shout out. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And there, there's some like really epic moments sure. on this album. Like he's gotten really the whatever Buggethead or I don't know if Dan Mondi is involved with these, but whatever whoever is making these pikes is doing, especially with keyboards and drum programming now, is like really elevating Definitely. the music. And I hope this is what you know the pikes sound more like production wise going forward because it is a. Uh, Definitely a lot more modern than the stuff we heard in, you know, 2019 and before. Yep. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. and, like, what's what's interesting to me, uh, to me about that is that, you know, after listening to all these albums, after listening to all this mm-hmm. BH, all this B-head, he can still surprise yep. us. Like, this was still a surprise to me. Like, hearing, like... Like yeah. a keyboard play a melodic lead is was surprising to me. He yeah, doesn't right? do that. Yeah, no, like, straight up. He doesn't, um, no. And so I, I hope he does more of that. I hope he, like, takes less of a focus on guitar. And, you know, we, we've seen him do sure. that before. There was that album that was mostly just bass Oh, that was drums. a cool one. I like, actually, no the guitar. one that was entirely that was a bass sick album, drums, right? that one was really fun. Yeah, yeah, and it was, like, prog bass I actually bass really parts. liked that That bike. was really that, sick that as fuck. That was great. Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I really liked what he was doing here. I liked the direction. I hope he kind of keeps going with it. Uh, if I had any complaints, and this is going to sound weird... No solos on this album at all, and I thought he could have done a shreddy thing or two, especially on the first two songs. I mean, he and has the last some, like, song, it was so leads. long. Like, nah, it's mostly yeah. just riffs. Um, but like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. You know, uh, but still, like, what a cool, what a cool Pike. Like, this is definitely above average. I would say, like, cool. it is oh, definitely above average. Essential yeah. listening if you're listening to the Pikes. I, I, I'd say maybe this is like one of the best Pikes. Of the twenty. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like so I, I would, if not maybe the probably, best pike of twenty twenty. I would say so probably. Like, the last few weeks have been like, you know, the, a little yeah, underwhelming. They've been okay. Um, um I think the early two hundreds, like he was really in a stride, right? And like he really mm-hmm. like the mid two hundreds, he like really started putting out like some really good stuff. I remember for like a solid like four or five episodes, we were like, damn, like he's really putting out some good stuff. And then, um, yep. then it kind of, yeah, like you said, like, I, I think, I think, it, uh, kind of when he started touring extensively, um, he stopped making so many and also the quality kind of dipped a little bit up until here. Um, and I hope this is like his grand we'll return. See. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Definitely. We'll see going forward, but I guess. Yeah. Pretty solid. Pretty solid shit. I love the idea of a star serpent. I just got to call that out. Like, that's a great name for a band. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in a metal band, you need yeah. a band name. And it's it's one Star word too, Serpent. I believe. The title. Star, Star Serpent. Serpent. Yeah. yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, what was the last grave you visited? Uh oh, I was uh I was driving. Or no. Was I driving or was I walking? I don't remember. Um I was driving. No, I was driving. And I, w- I was driving back from work, and I went away I don't normally go. There's a lot of ways that you can go, and I went away I didn't normally go, and I saw it in, mm-hmm. like, this huge cemetery that was very beautiful and very old. And yeah. I guess I just saw it from my car, so I didn't actually visit it. But that was the last, that was the last graveyard I saw. I don't know. It's the best answer I have. You don't remember the last Okay, so the last went grave to. I went to was in 2019. Uh-huh. I remember that because I was hanging out with this girl. Um, it was that girl I was hanging out with in 2019. We went and walked through a cemetery and we like hung out in front of this grave because there was like a tree that was like kind of growing like to the side of the grave that like kind of covered part of it. And yeah. so they had like a plaque that was uh-huh. in the ground, but like the tree had like grown up all around it. I don't remember the name though, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. You ever you ever had sex I've in not. a graveyard? Have you? I'm, oh, okay. Uh, of course. Of course. Of course. How can you? That's. <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's cool. Uh, do you uh. You ever get spooked out? You ever get spooked out anywhere? You ever get spooked? Well, that's what I call raw dog. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Spooking out. Like, okay. Hey, hey, girl. Yeah. You want to spook out? Oh yeah. Uh, spook. Spook out. <laughs> spunk. 
I, I hate the word spunk for cum. That's got to be the worst uh, word. For yeah, cum, that's a right? pretty bad one. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, I like I like like jizz. Yeah. Jizz is fun. Jizz is I, oh, fun you know what? Say. Okay, you know what one I hate more than any of the other ones. I what? I hate even saying this. It makes me feel disgusting. <clears throat> Baby yeah. gravy. <laughs> oh, baby gravy is bad. You know, you know it's you know it's actually so bad that it comes around and it's the best one possible. A population <laughs> pudding. I've never heard that. I heard that on a fu- on a, on like a fucking porn or something. She's like, "Give me your population pudding," what? and I had to like pause because I was laughing so yeah, hard. That, wow, damn. I th- I think they were joking because it's a. Uh, it, it was the the same studio I think that made or the same people actually that uh, did the the lemon stealing. Oh horrors. yeah, yeah, lemon stealing horror is a, a yeah. classic, mm-hmm. classic of the genre. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, yeah, wow. We've learned a lot today. <laughs> yep. Population pudding. Sure. Is that the name <laughs> of the episode? Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah, that's the Pikes we listened to. They were pretty good. I uh, or they weren't really all were, that good. Did, Sorry, I wasn't paying Spencer, attention. Were you just in the I same conversation attention. I was having? Okay. One out of three, out of, three of, them of them was, was good. good. The other two One, weren't. Yeah. Okay, Come well, on, okay. Spencer. You know where my mind was? To be honest, I was thinking about no. listening to these Pikes today. Population no. pudding. No, I think about pudding. No. And how you miss it as a vegan. You're like, oh, I wish I could <laughs> have that pudding. <laughs> I wish I could have that Bill Cosby pudding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want that pudding. <laughs> Population pudding. No, I was, yeah, you Sandler. are doing let it, Adam Sandler. Let me That's stop that. Ter- now, let me give you a population pudding. Why? Uh, is, let yeah. me get it right in your booty <laughs> hole. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Did you see that picture of fucking Adam Sandler that was going around recently where he's just dressed insane? Like he's always dressed he's always dripping to okay. the hilt. I'm gonna dripping. fucking text you this. Dripping. He's like he's always dressed like Kevin Smith when Kevin Smith was fat. Yes. That's what he's dressed like. That's exactly what he's dressed like. Not the same size as Kevin Smith ever was. It's really interesting to see. What's the biggest animal you would uh, masturbate if it was your job? <laughs> if it was my job, like, how, am I being paid well? Like, how much am I being paid here? I mean, it's it's what you have to do to survive in this scenario. It's uh, the only job you can get. <laughs> shit. Uh, but, no, well, no. Then, how do I get a choice <laughs> in the animal? <laughs> like, uh, because you're the most senior animal masturbator. <laughs> In the animal masturbators union, and so you okay. have, uh, all right, you have, you have the first, uh, the bidding. You get to, you get to choose the order. Um, uh, so the biggest that I would like feel comfortable masturbating. Yeah. All right, a horse probably. I think a horse is probably the limit. Okay. Like I don't really want to go big. Like a horse is already a pretty big animal, but they got that yeah. big old horse dick, big old yeah, floppy yeah. horse dick. And we'll, I can reenact we'll talk about that, that later. I got a from, joke about that from uh, Freddie got fingered, and I can <laughs> be like, "Oh, daddy, look at me! Oh, look at me! I'm and a then, farmer, daddy! Look at me!" <laughs> oh, that's isn't that Herbie's voice I was using earlier? Yeah, basically. I yeah. can't believe that scene is in that movie. Like, I watched so that good. movie it's somewhat so recently, good. and he literally jacks off a real horse. Like, it, mm-hmm. it is like he jacks off a real horse. Like, it's there's he just does that in the movie. Like, how so, did they let that be made? <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, people are paid to jack off horses, though, is the thing. Like, on stud farms and shit? Well, yeah, like, definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, not not like that. They have, a like, a, a, a thing that like catches a, all like the a sperm. Like a horse jacker. Yeah. A horse jacker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, jack the horses. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of jacking horses. Yeah, I, I was wondering if you would be interested in taking a journey with me, Britt. I would love to take a journey. Where are we going? We're going into the bucket. Statements from the bucket board. Bucket board. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Look at that. Our, oh, our God. Jesus Christ, Spencer. 
Our God is an awesome God, and our he God reigns from heaven above. Is above, above, reigning above. from heaven above, and He's going to show us some sick ass statements from the goddamn bucket void. You ready YouTube. for this? YouTube. It's YouTube specific. comments. That's that's the the point of this segment. Let's get into oh, it. Yeah. Graydon's Katzosh says something we can both uh, understand and agree to nine months ago. Is he playing his melodies in studio and double it in live situation? Sure. Do- double? Double. He doubled it. Yeah. You- <laughs> I love doubling it. <laughs> Me too. When was the last time you doubled it, Spencer? Uh, Last night, twice. Um, cool. Pom Pom cool. 906. As really one year cool. ago, recorded on the fabled potato mic. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Like, like <laughs> it, you know how they uh, they use like potatoes as a battery in like science fair experiments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Buckethead was doing an experiment here where he was trying to use a potato as a microphone. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's the Just only like a potato. He is a farmer. He is a he farmer is. daddy. A farmer daddy. He is. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, Just Noise says one year ago, people are really strange in the comment section. Yeah, it's <laughs> a Buckethead it's comment. Buckethead YouTube. It's, it's on Buckethead YouTube. What the fuck like, you expect, do you... man? Right? Yeah. Wow, okay. Know. Well, someone, what... some, some people don't understand where they are. What's the strangest comment section you found yourself in recently? I mean, you always have to go back to um, the sinkers over at uh, right. Yeah, the uh, the the Ooh. fucking have we have we seen stuff. if there's if they're talking about the new uh, Predator movie yet? Because there's a sinking scene in that. Oh, I'm sure they are. We gotta, you know, honestly, like I messaged uh-huh. uh, past guest and friend of the cast, Cool Strike, about this. I was like, hey, you need uh-huh. to know, new Predator movie. There's a sinking scene. Uh-huh. And she was like, wow, that's amazing. And we talked about it for a little bit. We need to do some research. If there is oh, discussion about this. Oh, yeah, about okay. This, so, no, the, get... the top the top thing is, has anybody seen Prey yet? There's ah, only one. I knew it! I called only, it! There is only one reply, though, oddly what? enough. Uh, and this was posted today. Wow. Like, Maybe there's a couple another hours thread about ago. it. Well, that, that, that movie came out like a, no, a while no, ago. No, no, because there's not a whole lot. Well, I mean, so let me see. So that's just on the uh, the general discussion. Let's see about member submission. No, that wouldn't be on there. Nuggets. Yep. Okay. So pray the movie on Hulu. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. There we so go. under under nuggets where people like submit stuff, there uh-huh. are t- two guides here. Um, one is pray quicksand scene alternate ending, which has three replies. But the big boy here, uh-huh. like the only thing going on in this forum right now, uh-huh. um. Uh, posted 10 days ago on August 5th, so far as 30 replies, over almost 3,000 views. Right. Uh, Pray the movie on Hulu. Wow. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of... We might need to do a bonus episode, my friend. Yeah, let's we, do it. We let's... may need to, to, to sink <laughs> in. But you know what we should do? I think the funniest thing to do would uh, to be to say it's a review of Prey. Uh huh. But we only talk about the sinking. But yeah, so so we start talking about the movie, and then right when we get to the quicksand scene, we only talk about that for the rest of the time, <laughs> and we we like just just hijack the podcast. Honestly, not far off from like the movie podcast I have listened to. <laughs> so, Excellent. Excellent. Uh, that could be fun. That could be fun. Yeah, you should watch that movie, uh, uh-huh. and then let's do that. Let's figure it out. It'll be good. Uh, oh yeah, I'll Disney message uh, okay. I'll message Cool yeah. Shrek. We'll see if she, right, she'd be cool, down to yeah. come on and talk about. I have it on my service. I'll, I'll check check out that bad. Biatch. Scott Norris says one year ago, warp speed, Mister Buckethead. Ho 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 ho. ho, 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 ho yeah. yeah. Parentheses. Butthead voice. God, that rocks. This dude rocks so much. <laughs> I know. Scott Norris. God <laughs> speed, you beautiful motherfucker. Hell yeah. You rock. We love to see it. Good shit. Um. Carpenter Joe, which I have to assume is Carpenter Brute's brother, uh, says one year ago, taken from Jim Bob Bobaloo Bob's cell phone, which <laughs> by the sounds of it is a knockoff of Android. 
Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Sounds like it was recorded on a phone, but yeah. Jim Bob Bob Lou Bob. <laughs> Bob Bam phone. I uh I just really like everything about this comment. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful a, it's comment. A really, Thank you, Carpenter it, it Joe. Carpenter Th- Joe. Thank good, you. Good man. For that. Good man. Perfect. Yeah. Um oh wow. Okay. Whoa. You didn't oh, see that. Getting a little that. ahead of yourself. You didn't see aren't that. You? Okay. I did. You did. I did. Don't you didn't. Okay. Don't worry about it. Alex MES says one year ago. In fact, it looks like a real battery. A nice change, in my opinion. Joining forces always brings benefit. What? I don't know. <laughs> but why does it have three lights? I don't this... know. It makes no sense. I, I have no idea what this person was talking about. Uh, they... I, like, this, this is someone like fucking trying to like post on the Radio Shack forums, but accidentally right. posting on YouTube instead. It doesn't make any I, sense. I, yeah. Truly no idea. And I don't know why there were three, you know, three likes on that. It's, it's unhinged. Uh, and speaking uh-huh. of unhinged, Mr. Hyde says nine months ago edited. All I have are my three children and bucket head. Or no, sorry. All I have are my children and bucket head. These three things are my world and all that clears my mind. Not sure where I'd be without. So I'm assuming yeah. he has two children, or maybe like there's a third thing that he didn't mention. Well, that's well. I mean, these three things are my wor- so. All I have so, are my children and Buckethead. So I think that his children. Well, no, no, the, two no, things. no. The third thing he has is Doctor Jekyll. Because <laughs> he's Mister Hyde, right? Right, and, right. And also, I wanted to say, what do you think this Buckethead with the E T D stands for? Because he, he capitalized E T and D in Buckethead. Oh, some people do that. It's like a stylization thing to try to make it look the way the logo looks for the Buckethead Land logo. Oh, uh, I don't like that. Yeah, people do that on uh, on on YouTube. I don't. I don't know. It's it's a mm. thing. I don't know. Um, Axiom Ape says nine months ago. Uh-huh. Uh, do you want to read this one? No, no, I don't have too much uh, Diet Coke left, so I'm my throat's. Pretty, <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to read it either. <clears throat> yeah, that's okay. Axiom Ape says nine months ago, the master can't never stop working hard. The h- smile on my face to be alive. Well, Buckethead is. Thank you, Buckethead. My children and I love you so much. I don't know if his children really love Buckethead so much as it's like the music that their father forces upon them and right. yes it's a father <laughs> i know i love i love that you clarified yes. that i was gonna i was gonna ask i'm not i'm not being presumptuous someone named you are. axiom ape with buckethead as their fucking avatar posting only in caps is a man yeah there's no way that is a, uh, a female so, uh, uh, it's not power not po- not possible billy powell says nine months ago How is it this dude drops killer music on the daily and it takes Tool 10 effing years to drop an album with only 12 songs? Who is the real genius here? I'm a Tool fan, but come the hell on. I will say I'm not a Tool fan and come the hell on. Yeah, Tool, like, for for being as boring as they are like i'm like why did it take them half a decade to write this album that because i've actually listened to all of their albums i think now yeah i I actually listened "Eh." to fear inoculum not by choice i I, I didn't have any interest in listening to it but like one of my coworkers put it on so i actually listened to the whole album and actually i didn't hate it i actually thought it was fine like it's it's totally production's good production's good it's It's fine it's it's very like it's boring i i I didn't find it necessarily boring, but like I definitely can understand that perspective. Like it's mm-hmm. not music for everyone. It's very slowly paced music that's very like yeah. I don't know, atmospheric. Some mm-hmm. people really dig that. I think it is fine, but like yeah, that that should not take you more than a couple of months at most to write and produce like yeah. real talk. Like it's not that complicated. Um yeah, okay. John, okay, hold on. We're entering uh it's time 
It's time to go into come corner, my friend. You think it is? All yeah, right, let's it get in. Is. Get right in that corner. Mm-hmm. Getting horner, massive boner. Let's get into the come corner. All right, Johnny Blaze says nine months ago, when a new pike is released, I piss my pants. I piss your pants too when a new pike is released. The reason think, why this is. Do you think Johnny Blaze squirts? Do you think oh, that's why they're saying that? Yeah, Johnny Blaze probably squirts. But like Johnny Blaze's uh, uh, version of squirt is just like literally just pissing their pants. Right? Well, I mean, every version of squirt is just piss. That's true. So that's, that is, uh, that's what makes it hot. <laughs> um, the reason this isn't come corner is because of the response. Stephen uh-huh. Ewing says nine months ago, I jizz mine. I jizz yours too, Stephen Ewing. Ewing. Uh yeah. Yeah, we we all jizz into Stephen Ewing's pants. Hell yeah. You jizz, I jizz, we all jizz for Stephen Ewing's pants. <laughs> the, the brotherhood of the jizz pants. Yeah. Uh the traveling. You jizz you pants. cream, I cream, we all cream for the cream team, baby. And Stephen Ewing. Yeah. Stephen for Ewing Stephen is Ewing. The, the captain of the cream team. Yeah, obviously. As we know. Uh this is his. Uh, we're out of we're out of come corner now. Uh, that we only fast. have that one. Uh, <laughs> you 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 came fast. Yeah, <laughs> of course yeah. I come fast. I have YouTube. That was a premature come corner, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But yeah. Uh, Nick Mariucci says nine months ago, when I was young, twenty five years ago, my cousin dressed as Bucket for Halloween. I will never forget it. I, just a little kid wondering. What a weird costume. What is it? Man, he's tall. I don't know what a bucket head is. My cousin replied, he's a musician. Then, a couple of years later, I found secret recipe and pretty much kept ejecting it over and over again until I figured out what buttons not to press So I just kept going to 1992 when he was ripping solos to Interworld. Um, (laughs) I don't know what this means. I'm very confused about the... I kept ejecting it over and over again until I figured out what buttons not to press. Ejecting cum over and over again. Oh, ejecting? That's a... Oh, eject ejaculating <laughs> yeah that's what he means and pretty much kept ejaculating it over and over again until i figured out what buttons not to press yeah so so he figured out how not to press his prostate right his cum button right gotcha okay this th- this was just like kind of cryptic and like mm-hmm. a little coded but yeah I, I get you nick i get, <laughs> I get you. you i get you we all get learn you. how to press that button again come 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 all over yeah yeah ejaculate yeah yeah <laughs> exactly uh-huh. Darwin Blinks says, Halloween's official band is Misfits, but Buckethead is the official guitarist of Halloween. Um, How do we feel about okay. that? It's, uh, it's a bold I mean, statement. It's a bold claim. That's I, fine. I, I, I mean, Misfits are a Halloween-ish band. I, yeah, definitely. They're a Halloween-ish band. I would say Halloween's so official band, though. Obvious. King Diamond. Ooh, yeah. I mean, that's. I was going to oh. say Danny Elfman slash Oingo Boingo, but... Yeah. That's, that's true, but also, yeah. King Diamond yeah. is a fine choice. Wait, did King Diamond or uh, Merciful Fate do Halloween? Uh, that's King Diamond. That's on uh, okay, top yeah, of yeah. Abigail. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Fatal no, Portrait. No. Top of Fatal yeah, Portrait. okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's early early King Diamond. Halloween! Yeah, that's a sick song. So, uh, for for me, he's definitely the, the official band of Halloween. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. He wrote a song called Halloween. Like, it's, yeah. it's pretty much the most iconic Halloween o- o- song. Oingo Boingo, though. I can accept that, right, especially like, I, I with their like tradition a, of Halloween concerts and whatever. Dead Man's Party is on every Halloween uh-huh. play, Halloween playlist. Like, it's oh, absolutely. Just, and then Danny Elfman's other music, you know, the music that he did for The Nightmare Before Christmas, that is also on a lot of Halloween playlists. This you know? is Halloween. This is yeah. Halloween. Yeah, you know, he is, he is, he is, I think Danny Elfman is the official artist of Halloween. Okay. He could be considered that, but I think that King I Diamond could, is a I could, perfectly I could legitimate choice as, yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know? By the way, by the way, this... this Commenter's name is Darwin Blinks, uh-huh. and I think you need to reread it as a, a combination of Charles Darwin and Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Darwin Binks. <laughs> Darwin Darwin Binks. <laughs> ha, hello, Halloween's uh, official band is Misfits, but the Burkett Head 
It's uh, the official guitarist of Halloween. <laughs> so. Yeah, I loved that, Britt. Thanks. Like, please feel free to do that voice anytime. Uh, it was my favorite thing. <laughs> Uh, just an update here. Uh, Brit's almost finished the half gallon of Diet Coke. I have, I have like uh, a little over a cup left, a little over eight ounces. Right. Yeah. We're we're nearing the end. It's uh, it's pretty good. Okay. So now it's time. Guess who's back? Back again. Our favorite YouTube commenter. He's here. Oh, is it our boy? It's our boy. It's our boy. Master of the ship key, a bucket bot divine. Come and do it, Jordan. It's time for the Vine. Oh my God, on the Jordan Vine void. Holy shit! So mm -hmm. he went on a tear again. Did um, he? Yeah. Uh, on so he's we're we're coming up close to like now. I wonder. God, I wonder if he's still out there. If he's still commenting, because. Before, so, like he hadn't commented on any of the new stuff. Brit, but he's, the yeah. newest comment that I saw this week mm -hmm. is from nine months ago. No, Jordan Vine is still active, my friend. No, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta police. You, you have to police. Okay. The fucking new, new comments and like tell me if he does something like brand new. Okay. And uh, wait, you have yeah, you have access to the fucking oh, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, yeah. message him from there. Comment on his comment and try to get him to be on the show because we need our motherfucking Vine boy. We do need our Vine. We need the <clears throat> Vine boy because he's so he's been active while we've been doing the show. Indeed, while we've been doing the Jordan Vine segment. Indeed, we've had a segment for him like for a really long time. I mean, since like almost the start of the show, basically. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like in episode like in the teens, maybe or something. Right. Like that. It's. Uh. But yeah, he's he's the best, and so. He's got, we've, dude, we have so many Jordan Vine comments today. We're, we're going to read them. With all of them. We got to do line by line, though, because like he basically just does statement, then statement, then statement, then statement. Okay. So let's just go. go back and yeah. forth. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So let's do this one here. He, Jordan Vine's going to kick things off one year ago, and he was like not stoked on the live, the live pikes. Not stoked. And this, yeah. this is him stating his opinion about mm -hmm. the live pikes. Jordan Vine says one year ago, I only collect new pikes and new music, not live stuff, only music and pikes that are brand new. I really don't give a fuck if a pike or track sound like or sound similar to other pikes or tracks as long as it's new. And has got a different track title. I don't care. You don't care. <laughs> I just love, I love, I love that he does he, a lot of not caring for dude, like someone who is so vocal. He's, he's amazing. Like his cadence mm -hmm. of like how he types is like truly beautiful. Like he is, he is like, he is special and beautiful and a lovely we love, boy we love our jordan vine boy we love our vine boy we love Give jordan us more vine. vine boy we stand jordan vine he's he's great for 2069 give me more of jordan vine you know that's what dude I'm let's do a hip-hop song about jordan vine where we wrap oh up let's let's make stupid. me craft me a beat okay Spencer, i will i'll make a beat for that and i will i will become a rhymosaurus sex all over that beat i love that uh okay so we're gonna do a rare thing and in the jordan vine or the jordan void we're actually gonna talk about another comment a response to a jordan vine comment that was the one that we just uh read here Graham 68 KTM responds, calls Jordan out on his shit one year ago and says, but I thought, quote, the best guitarist ever, ever, the best ever was, end quote, can do what he likes. Is he mocking Jordan <clears throat> Vine? He's mocking this Jordan Vine. This is Graham 68, can't even get to 69, you fucking piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Are you mocking or beautiful vine boy yeah try again when you're at 69 bitch yeah <clears throat> yeah how about you shut the fuck up and know your place gram 68 ktm hell yeah you're not good enough for youtube comments go back to club penguin oh is it shut down too bad go to 4chan that's where you belong with your fucking bullshit 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Moving on. Jordan Vine says, one year ago, edited. Mm-hmm. We love an edited Jordan We're Vine. doing line by line again. Even though this is a new pike, but there's nothing new on it. This is a live pike. There have been pikes with a couple of live recordings on it, but they've had new tracks as well. But this pike is full of live recordings of classic tracks. So to me, it's not new pike with new material. It's a pike full of live recordings of classic tracks. So sorry, I only prefer pikes with new studio stuff on it. But this pike is all live recordings of classic tracks. So sorry, I'm not interested. Beautiful, beautiful. We love to see it. Uh, yeah, I, and this is this is one of the few times like he's straight up coming out against a pike. Yeah, he. Well, there was, was that other pike where he was like, "I don't like the heavy metal stuff. I just mm-hmm. like the." You know, but it, the chills. But like, I think the resolution of that was like, uh, but he can still do whatever he likes. Mm-hmm. And on here, did, did he even qualify it with he can do whatever he likes? No. I think it was, no. It was more down so to I just here's, don't. Here's him repeating himself again in another, in another, like on another video. But he's basically saying the same thing. But we're going to read it anyway because it's fun. Jordan Vine says one year ago edited. I wonder what he's editing in these comments also. <laughs> like, I think there's a lot that could be edited cadence, here, right? but, you know, whatever. Turnvine, one year ago, edited. Okay, this might be a new pike, but it's not a pike of new studio material. I only collect pikes of new studio material and new studio material only. This is just another live pike. Like the previous one. Oven mitts. <laughs> I love that he all caps is oven mitts. Oven mitts. Yeah. So I like pikes of new studio material. And this is not a pike of new studio material. So again, sorry, I'm not interested. I hope the next one has got new studio material on it. Yeah, it's new studio material for me and new studio material only. Not live material, which the last two recent pikes have been. So if a pike hasn't got new studio material on it, then sorry, I'm just not interested. I love the guy and his music. I really, really do, but I only want new music and new music only. Not live versions of classic tracks, which the last two Pikes had. I really do hope the next one has new material on it. (laughs) I love how he states his case, repeats it, then repeats it again. He's like a, a lawyer. He's like sticking to his guns, man. Okay. Like so the, the ac- jury finds in favor of Jordan Vine. Y- That's what he I'm is, saying. He is. And so lastly, <clears throat> in the Jordan Vine verse, at least, he addresses the new pike. So the pike after the two live pikes. Oh my so God, pike this is 296. From nine months ago. This is from like late last year. Yeah, this is from That's nine it. months ago. This is the most recent that we've seen. I was searching for him then. Yeah, I know. I didn't find him then. Jordan Vine says nine months ago, I love Buckethead! But only his music and his music only! Yeah, Yeah. I'm aware he's done loads and loads and loads of stuff with other bands and artists. But I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in his albums and Pikes, yeah. His stuff and his stuff only. This new Pike is awesome. Clapping emoji. That's that's what we got for Jordan Vine. 
clapping. Is that he doesn't use emojis very often? No, he doesn't. He used a clapping. It's an emoji. interesting use of a, an emoji. Do you think he just got a cell phone? <laughs> it's possible. Hmm. It is possible. Yeah, definitely a possibility. Um, thanks, Jordan Vine. We appreciate that. Jordan Vine. Jordan Vine. Jordan Vine. Jordan Vine. Elam Peniel says nine months ago, this pike is fucking gorgous. Uh, is he trying to talk about Gorguts? Maybe? Yeah, probably. Probably trying to talk about Gorguts. Yeah. Luke LeMay. Gorguts is sick. Yeah, you yeah. should definitely listen to Gorguts. Luke LeMay, fucking sick. He's uh, so good. Fucking so. Colin Marston, fucking sick. Did you see him live when they came here? Uh, you uh, think so? I think he might have came. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, Kevin Huffnagel, fucking amazing. Yeah, dude, yeah. Amazing I mean, just- guitarist. Yeah, and uh, who's playing? Was John Longstreet playing drums for him? Who was playing drums for him? Uh, when, uh, I don't, John Longstreet sounds familiar. I think that was right. I don't know if he, I don't think he's still playing with them, but I think he was playing. I with don't them. think so. John Longstreet, I think, who also played for Origin. Is right, that right, yeah, Origin. That yeah, that's his main band. Yeah. 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 Very fast drummer, man. Very fast drummer, man. Very fast drummer. Uh, okay, so I'm going to address something serious here for a second. Um, Goose Core. So there's a new Buckethead YouTube channel uh, called Buckethead Archive. And I say new, Mm -hmm. but they've really, I've only really seen their stuff pop up maybe in the last 30 pikes or so. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're called Buckethead Archive and they've been posting some of the more recent pikes because some of the uh, YouTubers that have been posting them before then, uh, Humano Being and Poly Poly 8, have been not as consistent um, in the more recent pikes. And so mm-hmm. Buckethead Archive has kind of like taken over some of that. Um, yeah. And something that I've been seeing on there. And so Goose Core comments about Buckethead Archive specifically on this on one of the uh, pikes we listened to this week. And they said mm-hmm. nine months ago, good uploads, but the flags on the channel RIP associating Buckethead with political ideas and then uses a clown face emoji. Now, Britt, I'm going to show you what their their page looks like, the flags in question that they're talking about. Hell yeah. So the flags in question that they're talking about is they have a uh, like a pride flag. So in, in uh-huh. so on a YouTube page, you can have like kind of like a background photo that shows up like behind yeah. your page when you click on the page. The, the banner photo. A banner photo, yeah. Banner, yeah. And so their banner photo is like a picture from uh, the Buckethead Pikes website. And then over, uh-huh. on, like on top of that, there's some text that says, a fan-made tribute to the lifelong work of Buckethead, unaffiliated with Buckethead. And then there are two flags. Uh, one is like a pride flag, uh, LGBTQIA flag. And then the other flag is a trans flag. Oh, yeah. um, which I think is like pretty uh, unique in the Buckethead community. Yeah. I, I didn't realize this that's, that's rad. until that's this rad. comment. And, and I think that uh-huh. that's, uh, that is rad. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you so don't, you don't honestly see a lot of trans representation, or at least visible trans representation, in Buckethead fandom, and so that's fucking rad as hell. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like yeah. trans rights are human rights. Fuck yeah. Uh, and so Buckethead Archive responds to this comment, um, mm-hmm. and like very quickly after, and said, in something I think we can both say, hell yeah, behind. Um, mm-hmm. These Buckethead Archive says, my existence is not political. Fuck you, trans rights. Are human rights sick as hell? Which is like, yeah, 100%. that's a great clapback. Like, don't be a dick. Like, what the fuck? Also, like, what does it matter, right? Like, I feel like somebody, like, you know, showing that sort of stuff, I think, is important for like a small insular community like this, right? Like, yeah, the thing 100%. about like, especially rep- especially very like white male dominant, right? And because white yeah. men tend to have the worst beliefs, at least in America. And the thing about representation in particular, which is what I think this mm-hmm. is a case of, right? Like Buckethead Archive chose to, you know, put those flags on their page to represent, you know, who they are, mm-hmm. which I think is important, like you said, for the reasons you said. Um, but like the thing about representation is that, like they said, it is not political to try to. Use things like that to represent who you are, right? And mm-hmm. like, I think that they're a person that is, you know, either proud of who they are or like, you know, maybe trying to seek some kind of like understanding of who they are. They're they're using these to represent that, and I think that that's important within this community. Mm-hmm. 
and and it's it's good for them. And it's it's just them representing their identity mm-hmm. and fucking Goosecore, this this bitch motherfucker over here says associating Buckethead with political ideas, clown face, saying that the being trans or being gay or queer is a political idea. I, and that's fucking fucked up. Right. That that I mean that that presumes that someone's existence is political like if if yeah if they just like put an american flag on there this person would not care even though the politics of america have something to answer for the politics of being a trans or or queer person mm-hmm. they have nothing to answer for exactly fuck you goose core yeah. go fuck yourself i completely agree fuck you we usually Gore. try to keep uh, the statement uh statements from the bucket void clean and wholesome mm-hmm. but Fuck you, you dumb motherfucker. Agreed. You're the fucking clown. <clears throat> yeah, oh yeah, for real. And like, one other thing I just want to note real quick here. Goosecore's mm-hmm. comment has no likes. And Buckethead Archive's comment has four likes. So, Good. let's just say that like, I think the Buckethead community is probably on the side of Buckethead Archive in this case. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And that is a lovely thing. We love to see that. Um, We're going to close things off with one more. Mm-hmm. M.R. Abink Gallagher says nine that months ago name. in our... Do you tri- think they're related to the uh, the Watermelon Man Gallagher? <clears throat> Definitely. Um, this yeah. is our one trip into Bucket Church. To be closer with you, let us go to the Bucket Church. To be closer with you, to Bucket Church we go. Mr. Abink Gallagher says nine months ago, Mantar strikes again with grooves that swirl, whirl, curl, and unfurl like a cryptic message from another galaxy that only your ears can uncode like the sound of universal joy creating itself. That's pretty sick. Hell yeah. This guy reads a lot of like Heinlein. Yeah, definitely. And Asimov. This is very Asimov. Actually, it's extremely Asimov. Yeah. 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 I like that a lot. Me too. Good, 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 Goodman, Goodman, Goodmanson, John Goodman. Statements from the bucket boy. Bucket boy. So it's recommendations. This is the part of the show where we recommend stuff for people to check out. Indeed, we do. Uh, you want to go first or me? Gotta, I don't care. I'll go first. Cool. I, I think you usually go first. So uh, first, I want to recommend uh, the podcast Knowledge Fight. I might have recommended it before on I've here. I know I've talked about show, it before but I've actually never listened to it. here. So it's all about InfoWars. Uh, which is why right, it's called right. Knowledge okay, Fight. Okay, so it's the guys from uh, from Knowledge Fight, or the guy from Knowledge Fight, I'm not sure, have, uh, the have two, guested two guys, on yeah. QAnon Dan Anonymous. And Jordan. They have, yeah. yes. Uh, and they're very, very funny, very interesting. Um, and basically, they just, like, watch everything that Alex Jones does, and they uh, fucking talk about it. And they just recently went to the trial of Alex Jones, Holy where shit. he was uh, ordered to pay two families of Sandy Hook victims uh, $4.2 million dollars. Which is not nearly enough, but uh, that's one of many like judgments. Like, there's more cases coming, which is amazing. Yeah, and he's probably going to lose all of them and have to go bankrupt. And uh, Infowars might be like a, a a media entity that is like owned by them, and that'd be awesome if they used Infowars to just like a, make a left wing media outlet. That would be just incredible. use its branding. That would be amazing. Yeah. I would love that. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the trial of Alex Jones just concluded and they just did, uh, like, um, so two podcasts with like people involved in the trial, like one expert witness that's like two hours long and then a two hour long interview with like both of the lawyers, like the plaintiff's lawyers and they're super funny and that was great. Uh, and then they just did a five hour recap on the entire trial and I recommend listening to all of that. That actually if sounds you're interested amazing. In that, I, at all, that five hour recap, I will probably listen to all of that tomorrow. <clears> yeah, it's, <clears> that it's, sounds it's great. split up into two parts, yeah. but uh yeah, it's it's super good. Um also I gotta recommend it's a, a film, a short film actually. Yeah. It's only one hour long. Okay. Um it's a film from nineteen ninety three called Terminal USA. Okay. And it is 
interesting. It's like one of the earliest films I've seen that I could say is like very self-aware in a modern kind of way. Um, and it's just crazy. It's, it's, a, it's about like a, a Japanese American family like falling apart over like the course of one hour due to like sex, drugs, and uh like the the one that they, they think is like normal ends up being gay. Oh, yeah. And it's uh it's fucking wonderful. It's a wonderful movie. It's I, it it's subversive. Where does someone it's watch something like that? On my server. <laughs> it's like if yeah. if you want a copy, just uh hit us up on social media and I'll I'll email one to you. It's uh I mean it's obviously a rare film that's out there. It might be available for Torrent. I didn't get it through Torrent. So I don't know. Look for it though. Might be might might be up there. Hell what do you got to recommend? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I just had my weekend, which is weird because I've been having my weekend on the normal weekends for the last like month and some amount of time. And uh which is a weird thing because like in the entire time that I have worked and I've worked for a long time, since I was basically seventeen years old, I've had a full time job. And I have never once had weekends off, like Saturday, Sunday. Um, but until I started this recent job in which I've had Saturday, Sundays off. Um, so I just had my weekend and over my weekend, I used it quite a bit of that time to work on catching up on Better Call Saul. Oh, it's so I know good, that right? is something that you recommended on this segment. I'm actually going to watch it right after we record this. Uh, my brother's waiting for me. Oh, that's fantastic. And we're going to watch the, yeah. uh, the series finale. Oh, hell yeah. So I, uh, I just oh. finished season three last night. Wonderful. And oh my fucking god, it is an incredible show. Like it is, it is Vin, so Vince Gilligan good. is one of the greatest modern storytellers. Um, like he's gonna, Vince he's Gilligan gonna go down Peter in history. Gould, uh, who is uh, yeah. co-creator? Oh, of definitely. Show. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But but Vince Gilligan. Well, I'm saying Vince Gilligan because he was like the creator of, of Breaking Bad and like the mastermind of that. And Peter sure. Gould is a great addition to his creative team. Yes. But Vince Gilligan, I think specifically, who might go down like is one of the greatest storytellers of our or not our generation, but probably like Gen X. Right. Like I think he's he's a better storyteller than like the likes of like a JJ Abrams. Oh, definitely. And like his work on X Files, like legendary. Like mm -hmm. dude A lot of great talent came out of X Files. Dude has like yeah, for real. Like uh Vince Gilligan, Frank Spotnitz, uh the, all those guys. Jack Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um Jack Black. <laughs> Everyone likes Jack Black. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, here's the thing. I, I was a huge fan of Breaking Bad. Like, I got into it maybe like a couple years after it air started airing. I think like it was airing its fourth season when I got into Breaking Bad. And so I like caught up and then watched like the fifth season while it was airing. And uh, Breaking Bad is an incredible show. And it like blew my mind watching it. And when they announced they were going to do a spinoff based off of the, the single comic relief character, well, not the only comic relief character, but like the primary comic relief character in the show, who, mm -hmm. I will say this, Saul in Breaking Bad, incredibly limited. Like, he's barely in that show. Like, he is like... I mean, in the later seasons. In the later seasons, seasons like, he's more of a character, but he is still like a recurring character. He's not a main character on that show, you know? Mm -hmm. And like... The fact that they have taken that character and spun him out into a show that is dramatically, like in terms of like storytelling, it is on par, if not superior, to Breaking Bad. Like the fact that they have done that with this character in the in the 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 guise of a prequel is just incredible. Like the show is so captivating. Like the performances are so good, the storytelling is so good. It's it's shot and scored very similarly to Breaking Bad, but likely due to a lot of the same people working on it. And it just, True. like, it is so fucking good. And, it, like, I recommend it specifically because... Um... <laughs> you okay there, okay. Spencer? Um... What just happened? So, so, so Britt started screen sharing while I was talking and screen shared to a tweet from at Billy Zane, who is uh, Billy Zane's uh, verified account on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, this is a tweet from 1124 AM on October 1st, 2013. 
be just yeah, just getting started for the day. I'm just getting started for the day. Uh, Billy Zane tweeted, uh, "Government shut down. Government shut up. Breaking Bad. Baking Dad. <laughs> Drop the meth. Pick up an apple. What do you expect, America, when we canonize a sociopath?" And so that's, in my opinion, the greatest thing we'll ever get from Twitter. Mm -hmm. We can get nothing greater from the platform. We should just shut it down at this point, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we had a few of those. Like, there was the Kevin Smith tweet as well. Oh, there that that's iconic. But honestly, <laughs> baking, baking dad... Slay every time, like you just breaking started talking bad, about Breaking Bad. Breaking in my bad. mind, I just stopped listening to you, and my mind wandered, and I'm like, "Government shut down. Government, sh I gotta, I gotta share." <laughs> and then, sorry, sorry to derail what you were talking about, you know, but uh, that was that was more important, to be honest. You know, you're right. It was more important. Yeah. Like, and I appreciate yeah. that. You know, sometimes, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of interruptions, but sometimes it's understandable. It makes sense. Yeah, that was a time in which it made sense. So I gotta say, thanks. Billy Zane recommended. Breaking Bad recommended. Better Call Saul, super mm -hmm. recommended. Absolutely. Dude, it, like, I gotta say, if you haven't watched Breaking Bad, watch it. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, if you've watched Breaking Bad but have not watched Better Call Saul, you should really watch Better Call Saul because it's fucking good as fuck. Right, and and also, yeah, I'll, I'll, definitely if you. Want to watch both? Watch Breaking Bad first. Oh, for sure. Yeah, watch it in the, like, the order because that there do. are definitely echoes yeah. and stuff that you shouldn't know watching. If you, if because chronologically, for the most part, um, Better Call Saul is a prequel. Right. There are some sequel elements to it and parts, but for the most part, there it's better if you have an underlying knowledge of the world of Breaking Bad first. Right. And it is all amazing storytelling. Like fucking binge that shit. Dude, for like real. remember. Remember, like, back in the day when you used to have to, like, rent DVDs from right. Blockbuster yeah. to binge a season or something? Uh -huh. I remember when, like, early early Netflix DVD doing that with uh, Lost. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that with yeah. Lost, too. Um, you know, my, my most iconic story of that is when I was hanging out with my cousin, and he had rented... Mm. So, the, Blockbuster used to do a thing. I don't know if this was an Alaska-only thing. I don't know if it was a national thing, whatever. But in Alaska, mm. you could do a thing where, like, uh, DVD sets of like TV shows, you could rent like a bunch of them for a week at a time at a like a certain oh, yeah. like flat rate. So like you mm -hmm. could, you would pay like ten dollars and you could get like as many yeah, as you wanted in, in, for a in week. Late blockbuster, like apparently nationwide, they just started doing crazy shit like that. Right, and like there were like no late fees. You could just fucking take two seasons of anything and shit like that. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know if it was available. It was yeah. this wasn't that recent. This was probably mm. Spencer, the end of Blockbuster wasn't that recent. Right. That's true. This was probably <laughs> like, It hasn't been a I think they went bankrupt in what, like two thousand six or something like that? This was, was like probably two thousand No, uh, they didn't go break bankrupt in two thousand six. They didn't go bankrupt until at least two thousand nine or two thousand ten. Um, it's like the the Alaskan ones were some of the last ones. right, right. But like, so you, and like most of those were independent. You want to know how too. I gauge this? I gauge this uh. because like when I moved to Washington, I still rented mm -hmm. stuff from Blockbuster. I rented stuff from Blockbuster mm -hmm. here in Washington, or not here, but like in Washington, up until at least 2010. So that was the last time I rented from Blockbuster was 2010. So I, I know that for sure. Um, okay. That being said. This was probably 2003, maybe 2002. My my cousin okay. had yeah, rented, yeah. Uh, like, I think every season of Friends, like all of them. Oh, gross. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. But this was like, this was, okay, it was a different time. It was a different context, mm -hmm. right? This, this was not a time yeah. where you could easily, like, binge watch a TV show. It was not, you either had to own the DVDs or rent the DVDs, right? He had yeah. only rented all of the DVDs because it didn't cost him more to do so. So... As a mm -hmm. result of that, he had like literally dozens of DVDs of friends. And he was like, hey, man, I got to return these on Sunday. It's Friday. And I have five seasons left to go. We got to watch them. So <laughs> we watched like five seasons of friends in like two days, um, which is an insane thing to do. 
Uh, but like the Friends like DVD menu music for like season five is like permanently burned into my brain because I fell asleep while watching it and it like stayed on the TV. Yeah. Um, also the Scrubs like DVD menu music is burnt into my brain, but that's because in 2010 my roommates decided to wa watch all of Scrubs and they owned it on DVD and they left it on and the TV was like shared a wall with my room. So like I could hear mm -hmm. the bass line just on repeat all night and it was like... Too bad it wasn't Seinfeld. Oh, I know, right? Then, well, that would have at yeah. least been a better bass line, but... What's the deal with bucket jokes? Ha, 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 bucket joke. Ha, 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 bucket joke. Ha, 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 bucket joke. Ha, 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 bucket joke. I uh, got off early at work today. Just went into the bathroom after my coffee and rubbed one out. I saw a crust punk sewing their battle vest, uh -huh. and uh, they were crying, like bawling their eyes right. out. I asked if they were okay, and they said, yeah, I'm just going through a real rough patch right now. Mm. Nice. You know, testicular pain is only authentic if it comes from the testicular region of France. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just sparkling balls. <laughs> what? That doesn't even I make I saw, sense. I saw it does, I saw, I saw the, the, the phrase testicular pain, and I'm like, is that like champagne? <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> it just opened a spa that's also a gay bathhouse. So be specific if you order the blowout or the facial. Right. <laughs> I just got a job working for a parking company. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do much, but I do work a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You're working I a work lot. I work a parking lot, Spencer. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. mm. A Bostonian walks into a sheep, but he meant to go to a bar. <laughs> I finished Stranger Things this week. Not the show. My weirder handjob clients. <laughs> cool. Cool. In a study this week, it was revealed that over 75% of partner men are unable to fall asleep after climaxing mm -hmm. because they have to delete the browser history first. Cool. I gave up poultry lunch meats. Cold turkey. Hey. And I'll finish my jokes on this one now. Who has one thumb and is probably about to make an ableist joke? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's all my jokes. Um, <laughs> here's here's the uh, the good jokes that we, we call bad jokes now. Right. Um, all right. That uh, I scour the internet, find the, the worst bad jokes. We'll start out with this one. Iron Woman's superpower is ironing? <laughs> what? Ever smoke so much pot that your wife starts to make sense? No. Me either. <laughs> so Women this bad! Week, this week, vegans mourned the death of their favorite vegetable. Which one? That's the joke. Damn it. I don't listen to ABBA, not because of their music, but because I hate palindromes. <laughs> I actually like that. No, it's not good. <laughs> uh, you know, um, you know. Okay, wait, so let me punch up that joke here. Vegans mourned the death of their favorite vegetable, Albert R. Broccoli, producer of the James Bond films. Mm. Or uh, broccoli from Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not actually his name. That is to his name. Okay. Chuck Norris does not teabag the ladies. He potato sacks them. Nice. Well, that was boring <laughs> ass fuck. The porn addict sighed after watching yet another anal scene. <coughs> what? <coughs> Gift coupons sold on Earth are not accepted in heaven. What? 
here's one I really don't like. Um, I think it's supposed to be kind of racist. Um, okay. You call it a barcode. I call it an Ethiopian family portrait. What? Wait, what? What does that even mean? Jägermeister should be consumed in an elevator to lift up the spirit. What? <laughs> okay, I like both of those were like, whoa, whoa. I don't know what to make of either of them. People who have killed an odd number of people are much scarier than people who have killed an even number of people. Please don't tell me that's the whole joke. Now we're going to move on to <laughs> jokes that uh, were not upvoted at all, but I think are great. Um, we're we're going to start on one that I actually re-entered into the ledger, and I actually took out the uh, the joke that was... Um, uh, what, what was... I forget what it was. It was the one about Hitler's favorite sitcom, Mad About Jews, right, is what right. it was. Uh, I took that one out and replaced it with this one. A criminal can never swim... Because he's sin king. <laughs> like I king, love that one. The king of that one the king sucks of sin, so much. The king of that sinning. one sucks in like some really special ways. Like I do agree. Does, that should be in the Hall of Fame yeah. for sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely. definitely. All right. This one actually, I don't know. I almost think it should climb up the list. It's getting there for me. Mm-hmm. A man walks into a stable. And the horse says, why the small cock? <laughs> so good. It's so fucking good. No, it's good. so good. Uh, you know, Kurt Cobain received <laughs> mind-blowing head on April 5th, 1994. It's, I think that might be my favorite joke of all time. Like, yeah. you know what was my previous favorite joke of all time? I don't, I don't know if I've What's ever that? told it on the podcast. It is a Neil Hamburger mm. joke. And that is, sure. you know the joke. It's like, what's the worst yeah. part about being gang raped by Crosby, Stills, and Nash? No um, young. No young. What's the worst part about being raped by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young? They're four part harmonies. Right? Yeah. Those are my two Beautiful. favorite jokes of all time. But, like, I think uh-huh. Kurt Cobain received Mind Blowing Head is maybe it's up there with those jokes. Like, it's, it's really, really good. good. That's really good. All right. Two women walked out of a library. Cleaned they cleaned it so well. So well. They cleaned it so well. Ha, 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 joke. That's the fucking That's show. The fucking Where show. can I find you and reach you online and stalk you Spencer. online, Spencer, zone. and ask you for butthole pictures? Oh, I mean, by all means. Like, I would be honored. Nobody nobody asks for butthole pics. Everybody just wants, like... Uh, Maybe you. Just... I get a lot of people asking I see, for I, I don't I have a lot of people asking for nut videos sound on but no nobody asking for mm. butthole pics like yeah if they ask for sound on I make them regret it I play some uh, play, play some new YouTube music <laughs> on there yes exactly nobody wants to hear YouTube it's a beautiful day <laughs> and I'm can you imagine jerking fucking... off to YouTube cuz I can't oh my god you know you know you know you know what PMVs are uh no porn music videos oh my god what so they're kind of a big thing like on people will like remix no. different porn scenes no. or just remix no. like a porn scene into no. a song no yeah no and it's a thing i now. mean i know what an amv but, 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 is i know what an amv is which is an anime music video i okay never uh, so would PMV, have assumed no. the darkness mm-hmm. exists in the in the no. human so, race so the thing is though people only ever really do it with like hip-hop and uh and the thing is, a lot of them are like, you know, on beat and they're like edited on beat. It would be so funny just to take someone's edited PMV porn video and like replace it with like a song from Phantom of the Opera or like <laughs> just just some nonsense song that doesn't belong in porn Dude, at all. Like, the idea of a porn music video is a horrifying and like dark thing. Truthfully. Welcome to the future, Spencer. Oh God. You can uh, reach me uh, online yeah. at, uh, at a bucket cast. But you know what? You should probably instead go, uh, go to our Patreon and subscribe to our Patreon. Let's give a quick Patreon update. Right. What's going on on Patreon this week? Um, probably put up a watch along of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. 
Um, I don't know. Probably uh, maybe a jerk off vid. No, sorry, not no. that. Unless you pay for Gotta it, subscribe to I the only fans for that. I have a, I have a, pre- I have a. Pre- I mean, if you send me fifty bucks, I'll send you a jerk off vid. That's cool. Fifty bucks is about right for me. Sure, I've done it for less. Yeah, same. Um, and a big shout out to our five dollar and above supporters. Dan Morrison, Dylan Lance, Ian Killia, Devin Saturnus, and Jordan Hale. And, uh, you know, everyone else below that that we won't mention because it's not one of their perks that they pay us for. Yeah, if you want to check out what I do, Spencer.Zone. I don't care. Whatever. You've already said that. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, thanks for double-plugging yourself, Spencer. Now I have to go and edit it. Well, I've been Spencer. And I've been Britain Ryan's Rock. You've been listening to Getting Head. A bucket cast. A bucket cast. Brother. Stay greasy, bucket heads. Namaste. Brother. Brother. But wait, there's more. There is. We have one more song on here. You can't try to get laid or watch me ball. You gotta go out and get that job. What a waste of pleasure. This is our uh, final segment of the show, our secret segment, um, called uh, Epic Ralph Battles in History, where we take maybe real, maybe imagined historical events, things that mm-hmm. happened, uh, famous conflicts in history, man uh, versus man, man versus machine, man versus society, man versus mythos, mm-hmm. man versus his prostate, <laughs> man versus woman, man versus any other gender identity man versus bong mm-hmm. man versus wild mm-hmm. man versus bear mm-hmm. man versus sunglasses manufacturer luxotica <laughs> man versus cat man versus dalmatian dog specific man and that's it versus 1995's hackers um no, this is the the segment of the show where we take uh, a scene, our favorite scene, from Bam Margera's seminal, seminal 2009 film, Ming Hags. And we rewrite Ming it to Hags. fit events that happened, maybe, in human history. <clears throat> yeah. And it looks like we have two, rock, two Dude, rockers this two week. Dude, two bangers up, rocker? this week. I got to say. Uh, uh-huh. You want to do yours or mine first? Let's do yours first. All right. So, mine is... um based on a very public feud that Carlos Santana of Carlos Santana featuring Rob Thomas of Matchbox <laughs> 20 and uh, Gene Simmons of Kiss of capitalism. and of Piss. <laughs> yeah, of capital, uh, famously of merch sales, uh, Gene Simmons. Um, a famous uh, person who titled one of his solo albums Asshole, Gene Simmons, <laughs> And a confession to the world that he's a piece of shit and he knows it. Gene Simmons uh, had a public feud back in like 2009 going all the way to like 2013 or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was ever squashed. I don't know if they've ever squashed it. But um, basically they're uh, fucking, of course, Gene Simmons started it because he's an asshole. Like as his self-titled album would lead us to believe. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, would you like to be Carlos Santana or Gene Simmons? Oh man, uh, I'll be Carlos Santana. <clears throat> right. Make it, make it real. Taco I'm gonna Bell. make it real chill, man. I'm gonna be like, that's, that's not nah, Gene Simmons. Yeah. Okay. Santana seems Gene like Simmons a chill is... dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. He's got a he's got a growly kind of dickish voice. All right, All right. here we go. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, Carlos Santana, aren't you supposed to get off the stage today? Nah, Gene Simmons, I'm gonna play music all day, every day. You can't play no music. You gotta be a big rock and roll entertainer. Nah, Gene, 
I don't want to do your Las Vegas entertainment. I want to play music tonight. Carlos, I'm getting tired of it. You know, look at your shoes and think that's a rock concert. You're going to go off stage or put on a rock concert today. T-O-D-A-Y. Hey, this is muffed up, my friend. I mostly play pop and Latin jazz. I don't see why I got to put on mascara and do a fire show like you. Back in the 70s, we'd bury sissies like you. I'd like to show you how to put on a show, stupid. And I'd like to show you how to play a stringed instrument. You couldn't play the side of a bass. If I had my bodyguards here, they'd slice your throat. But your bodyguards aren't here, S.A. My supernatural forces will save me. I can't believe you've sold more albums than us. Everybody can believe I've sold more albums than you. What a waste of rock and roll entertainment. To the tune of guitar played by Carlos Santana. You're much more relevant than Kiss Music makes a good target. Stop staring at your shoes and put on a performance or else. You see this? I'm going to keep talking shit in the media far away from your face. Yeah. Learn, learn to rock and roll. Just for the record, that meow came from Peter Chris. That's true. <laughs> uh, although he was out of the band for a long time. They've got another guy that plays the Catman and has since like 1980. I love the Catman so much. Yeah, so Catman, Catman's great. All right. Uh, tell us about Okay, yours. so this is a conversation between uh, Creed vocalist Scott Stapp and the band of yeah. 311 in 2005. Come original, you got to come original. Mm -hmm. So in 2005, 311 was relaxing in a hotel bar to watch a Lakers mm. game. Uh, mm. In the same hotel bar, Scott Staff was getting very drunk and smashing glasses. Uh, he yeah. eventually instigated a fight with them and punched both uh, the vocalist. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. He punched the vocalist, S.A. Martinez. He punched mm -hmm. S.A. Martinez's girlfriend and he punched peanut the bass player so amazing was he was he was he breaking glasses like in star trek 3 the search uh, no so he was like taking shots and then smashing the shot glasses oh so not reading no, he glasses. was just being a piece i guess of that shit. wouldn't make a whole lot of sense yeah. in a bar unless they were also like they had a display of reading glasses yeah. for people to buy there which i don't know why they'd have at a bar so i don't know why i assume that so he it's a weird assumption on. He my famously part. said the line. This is this is rumored, but he famously came up to three eleven and said, "Quote three eleven, I am ready to fight," which is the greatest quote I've ever heard of my life. That is the greatest thing anyone has ever said in the history of human existence. Um, it's a it's a statement I wish I could say. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? But but it would be something where I'm joining 311 to fight the forces right, of evil. Right. Right. And I come to them and I'm like, 311, I'm ready to fight with you <laughs> on your yes. side against the exactly. devil. Exactly. You join. You join. And, and unoriginality. Yeah. Unoriginality. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, any other color that's exactly. not amber. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You join <laughs> again. You join with 311 to fight against the forces of darkness. Like you, you don't. Uh, I I joined with three eleven to fight against the forces of four twenty. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bet, do that battle with somebody, you know. Or or join three eleven to do nine eleven. <laughs> All right, so this is between Scott Stapp and various members of three eleven. Mm -hmm. It could be anybody who's responding. You know what I mean? I read yeah. a number of interviews with definitely. The band. It's definitely Peanut. Though. Uh, well, so it was S. A. Martinez. But it's peanut, peanut and uh, it's their peanut. drummer, uh, whose name I don't know. It's 100% Peanut know. the whole time. Because everyone takes credit for what Peanut does in that band. Uh, okay. Uh, that being said, that band is I, I believe this Spencer. is primarily between S.A. Martinez and, and, and Scott Sapp. Peanut joins in at the very end, and he gets punched by Scott mm -hmm. Sapp. Um, All right. Do you want to be I am going to be or... Scott Sapp. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. A come out original. You got to so come out you, original. So There's a people game you are going to be coming on it. The for. band 311 uh, as the Ralph character. Right? Right. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, 311. I am ready to fight. 
No! Ah, there's a b-ball game coming on at four! You can't uh, watch no b-ball game! You gotta fucking fight me! Nah! We're gonna try to chill in this hotel bar! 311! I'm getting tired of it! You're gonna fight me today! T O D A L Y! No! Oh, this is Muff Jop! I'd like you to take it lower, brother! Back at your show in Florida, I didn't get the impression you were all such sissies! I'd like to punch you and your girlfriend, stupid! You couldn't punch the side of a bar! If we were in the hotel bar! I'd start smashing glasses and get a rumble going! Well, this is the hotel bar! And if you start doing that, um, well, our road crew will save us! I can't believe you inspired me to form a band and sell 30 million albums! Great, so 30 million albums? What a waste of my sacrifice! Our band is 311! Your stupid band makes a good target. By the end of the day, I'm gonna make you fight me. You see these arms? They're gonna be wide open! I am ready to fight. Yeah, that's basically what happened. Yeah, cool. hell yeah, we love, We'd love to, to see, see it. it. All right, that's, that's the show. The show. Uh, blow it out your fucking asshole, ding dong, yeah. bitch, bitch, witch, uh, uh, ding dong, ditch in the witches and slam in the back of my Dragula.